Naruto sacrifices his life to seal away Kaguya Otsutsuki and is then saved by the Soul King who asks for Naruto's help in upcoming wars. Now reborn as Naruto Kuchiki, even as a Shinigami, he will walk the same path he did as a Shinobi. Smart, powerful Naruto, Naruto Harem, Chapter 1, W Where Am I? That was the first thought that crossed Naruto's mind as he regained consciousness. He slowly began to open his eyes, only to be greeted with nothing but darkness. Not moving, and just looking at the darkness for a while, he then began to look around and saw that he was floating in some sort of endless void, with nothing for as far as the eye could see. Where am I? How did I even get here? What happened? He thought with a frown as he began to recall what happened before he got to this void and how he got there. That's right, I sacrificed my life to seal away Otsutsuki Kaguya for all eternity. Naruto thought as he recalled his final battle with Kaguya, and how the seal had cost him his life. They hadn't been able to use the seal that old man Otsutsuki Hagoromo had taught him in Sasuke so in a desperate attempt he had summoned death and used old man Hagoromo's seal in conjunction with the Shiki Fujin and together with the help of death he had been able to seal away Kaguya for good. The help of death however, had cost him his soul, though from the looks of it he wasn't exactly in its stomach. He didn't know where he was and what had happened after his sacrifice but he hoped that the others were all right and that the Mugen Tsukuyomi had ended so that everyone was free from the worldwide Genjutsu. So I am dead, and now in the afterlife? Naruto wondered to himself as he looked around the void, man, if this is how the afterlife looks like then it sure is going to be boring. You are only partially correct young Naruto. Yes you are indeed dead, but you quite have not reached the afterlife. A voice said from behind him, and suddenly the dark void was replaced by a white space. Just like when he had met his dad and mom within the seal. Hearing the unnatural voice he quickly turned to see who had said it, and when he did, his eyes widened when he saw exactly who, or rather what, had spoken. The speaker appeared to be some sort of humanoid being, with slicked back dark hair, oval eyes with blacks clear and unusual pupils and very thin eyebrows. Despite looking mostly human, Naruto knew that the being in front of him couldn't be further from it. He could sense it, and he by no means sensed a human. In some ways his presence reminded him of Otsutsuki Kaguya and Otsutsuki Hagoromo, both of whom were by no means humans and were practically gods. He instantly became on guard. Who are you? Naruto demanded without taking his eyes off of the being standing before him, and what do you mean I haven't reached the afterlife? I am dead so shouldn't it be the afterlife? The being gave a low chuckle before answering, I am no as the Soul King, the king and the ruler of Soul Society, or the afterlife as you call it. Naruto's eyes widened at the answer. So this guy is some sort of god or something? The king of the afterlife? He thought as the soul king, somehow knowing his thoughts, seemed to smile in amusement. What I meant was that you are indeed not in the soul society, or the afterlife, but you are not in the world of the living anymore either. Currently you are within a limbo, which is the world, or the void that exists between the world of the living and the world of the dead. I brought you here when your soul was taken by the death of your world. The soul king explained, Naruto stared at the guy in shock at what he had just heard. So that's why he hadn't ended up in the stomach of death. This guy apparently took his soul from it and brought him here. But why? So why exactly did you bring me here? I doubt the king of afterlife would waste his time and go through all the trouble of bringing me here out of the kindness of his heart. Naruto asked again. He may be an airhead and a dense idiot most of the time, he was not stupid. He was a shinobi after all and was taught to always look underneath the underneath. And he knew that a being like this wouldn't just waste his time without a purpose. The Soul King chuckled again. Yes, you are indeed correct young Naruto. I did bring you here for a purpose. Soul King answered as he turned serious. Oh, and what is that purpose? I require your help, young Naruto. The Soul King said to him with a serious look. Naruto looked the Soul King, now confused. My help? Naruto asked as he tilted his head to the side. What would you need my help for? I can see great conflict and darkness arising in the future of the Soul Society. Answered the Soul King, and I need your help in ending those blood-filled conflicts and wars that are sure to occur in the future, just like you did to your own world. Wait. Naruto suddenly shouted cutting off the Soul King. You said just like I did to my own world, does that mean you know what happened to my world? Naruto asked the King who in turn nodded his head. Then can you tell me what happened after I died? Are Sasuke? Sakura-chan and Kakashi-sensei all right? Did the Mugen Tsukuyomi end? Are the people free from the Genjutsu? What about Kurama and the others? Naruto bombarded the Soul King with questions. Patience, young Naruto. I will answer all your questions, the Soul King said at Naruto's desperation to know what happened to his world. First of all, your sensei and teammates are fine, thanks to you. 
The Mugen Tsukuyomi ended with Otsutsuki Kaguya being sealed away and the people who were caught within the world of dreams were all freed as well. Though your friends and even the entire shinobi population were greatly saddened by your death and in your honor the five great villages have decided to keep their reliance. Naruto looked down when he heard that his friends were saddened by his death, he didn't want them to be sad. Though he was happy that they decided to keep being allies. The Soul King saw this but didn't say anything to show his sympathy. As to what happened to the Nine Bijou, they all decided to not leave your body and reform somewhere in the Elemental Nations, instead they decided to just stay with you. At the moment they are resting since they were rather exhausted from the long war. Naruto looked up at that, for some reason he felt happy that his friends had decided to stay with him even in death. And now with your duties as the child of prophecy of your world completed, I am in need of your help to save my world. The Soul King finished and by now Naruto had let down his guard and relaxed. So you need me to help out your world just like I did to mine? It was more of a statement than a question to which the Soul King nodded. What would happen if I accept? Naruto asked again, wanting to know everything. Then you will be reborn within the Soul Society within one of the four great noble families where you will then take up the path of a Shinigami to walk the same path you did as a Shinobi. And if I refuse? Then what? If you refuse, I am afraid I would not be able to do anything. Not even send your soul to soul society and your soul will be sent back to the stomach of death. Tell me first, Naruto said as he looked curiously at the king of souls, can dead people even give birth? And what exactly is a Shinigami? Shinigami are soul reapers, when souls with exceptional spiritual energy train their bodies, they become Shinigami. The Shinigami are guardians of the soul society. They purify hollows, who are the corrupted spirits, and guide the souls who have lost their way after death. In a way they are like Yoshinobi. The Soul King answered to which Naruto nodded his head, and you are correct. Normally the dead won't be able to give birth. However Shinigami who have exceptionally high spiritual energy can. The four great noble families are prime examples of this. That is why they are regarded with such high respect. Though, it is rare for even one of the four great noble families to have children. The Soul King finished his explanation and stood there awaiting Naruto's answer. Now, what is your answer? Young Naruto. So if I agree I would be reborn within the Soul Society and if I refuse I would be sent to death's stomach. Naruto said to himself as he held his chin in thought. He began to think on his options. If he agreed he would be reborn within the Soul Society where he would have to become a Shinigami and would have to work to end the conflicts and wars like he did to his own world, and also would most likely grow up with a family. Family huh? That thought alone made Naruto want to accept the offer. As someone who never knew the love of a mother or a father until recently, but more importantly didn't get to make memories either good or bad, so to have a chance to grow up with a family, to know the love of a mother and a father, to share memories and even a chance to grow up without being scorned for something beyond your control was like a dream come true. While on the other hand if he refused he would be sent to the stomach of death, which from what he knew was a living hell for the souls trapped within. So the choice really was obvious. Naruto looked at the Soul King again who was patiently waiting for his answer. You know what? Naruto began as slowly a grin began to form on his face, I'll do it. Time skip, 9 months, the Kuchiki clan manor. Standing in front of the closed doors to one of the rooms within the manor were three male figures. From within the room the screams of the woman could be heard. The first one appeared to be an elderly man with slate gray eyes, a gray mustache, and long gray hair. He was also wearing the standard Shinigami captain's uniform along with a white scarf. This was Jinrei Kuchiki the current head of the Kuchiki clan and also the captain of the 6th division. He had a calm look on his face with his eyes closed and arms crossed over his chest. The second one was a young man of average height. He had shoulder length black hair, purple eyes and light skin. His hair was neatly combed and his bangs pushed away from his face. He wore the standard Shinigami Shayakushu. This was Sojin Kuchiki, the son of Jinrei Kuchiki and the lieutenant of the 6th division. He had a very nervous look on his face as he kept glancing to the door every time there was a scream. The third one was a young child, about 11 years old. He had grey eyes and shoulder length black hair. He wore a white kimono top with dark blue hakama pants. This was Byakuya Kuchiki, the son of Sojin Kuchiki and the grandson of Jinrei Kuchiki. He appeared to be very worried as he just kept his eyes on the door of the room with worry written all over his face. All three of them were currently waiting in front of the room for any news on Sojin Kuchiki's wife who was currently giving birth to his second child. Father, grandfather, is mother going to be okay? Byakuya asked his father and grandfather as he looked up at the two with a worried look. Do not worry Byakuya, your mother and sibling are going to be just fine. It was Jinrei who had answered as he kept his eyes closed while Sojin just smiled at his son. 
After that all three fell silent again as they waited for any news on the mother and child. After what felt like hours, the cries of a baby were heard from within the door, and all three looked up when they heard the wails. After a short while the door to the room was opened as a nurse came out. She turned her attention towards the three and bowed respectfully. Congratulations, it's a healthy baby boy, you may go in and visit them. The nurse said before walking away. A huge smile formed on Byakuya and Sojin's faces while Jinrei just gave a small smile of relief and happiness at the news. Byakuya and Sojin quickly entered the room while Jinrei just followed behind at a calm pace. When they entered the room, they were greeted by the sight of a beautiful young woman with long, waist-length black hair and grey eyes, who was looking at the small bundle in her arms with a loving smile. This was Asanoha Kuchiki, formerly known as Asanoha Shiba, the wife of Sojin Kuchiki mother of Byakuya Kuchiki, daughter-in-law of Jinrei Kuchiki and the sister of the current Shiba clan head, Ishin Shiba. Byakuya instantly went to his mother's side as he looked at his little brother for the first time with a huge smile, and was soon followed by his father and grandfather. They all looked at the small bundle in her arms and saw the sleeping form of a small baby boy with a mop of black hair on his head and fair skin. Whoa! He is so small, Byakuya said with astonishment as he looked at his little brother. The three adults just chuckled at this. So, what's his name mother? Byakuya asked as he looked at his mother. Asanoha just looked at her baby who had began to stir at this point and was soon awake before opening his eyes to reveal two grey orbs, and looked at his mother after which he smiled causing Ashanoa's smile to widen even more, along with the others. Name? She said still smiling at her baby, Naruto. She said after a while of thinking, Naruto Kuchiki. Sojin chucked at that. Fish cake. He said still chuckling though he instantly shut up when his wife glared at him and he held his hands up in a surrendering manner while smiling nervously, hoping to avoid his wife's anger. It's not fish cake. It means maelstrom. Thankfully she calmed down after that causing him to release a sigh of relief. She then looked at her newborn son again and smiled. I agree, it was Jin Rei who had said that as he too smiled at his newborn grandson, it's a powerful name, which I am sure will fit him very well once he grows up to be a powerful Sinigami which I know he will. They all smiled at baby Naruto, not knowing of the great changes that are sure to occur with Naruto's presence within the Soul Society. Soul King's Palace Up, within the Soul King's Palace, the Soul King smiled when he felt Naruto's presence appear within the Soul Society. It would appear you have finally arrived, young Naruto. I wish you luck for the upcoming challenges you will face. Though, I have faith that you will overcome all of them. Even he, the one who sees all future, could not see what the future would be now with Naruto's presence within the Soul Society. But one thing was for sure, things were going to be a lot more interesting. Closing the book in front of her, Asano Hakuchiki released a sigh before casting a glance out the window to see the deep black that pervaded the sky letting her know it was at least past midnight. She released another sigh before standing up from her sitting position, she had been so engrossed in her reading that she had completely lost track of time. Looking around the room, she saw that her husband was already past asleep, and probably everyone else within the Kuchiki clan manor as well, all except for. She closed her eyes with a sigh before proceeding to walk out of her room to look for her little night owl. After a bit of walking she found who she was looking for. There, sitting on the veranda right in front of his room was her now four-year-old son, Naruto. Now as a four-year-old, Naruto had short black hair, which was unlike the rest of the Kuchiki clan who all had hair that ran past their shoulders. He had fair skin and his eyes over the years have changed form grey to a greyish blue. He was wearing a plain white kimono that was generally worn for a bed. She knew he would be awake at this time, despite it being late at night. This was a condition he was born with, he just couldn't sleep at night. Well, perhaps saying he just couldn't sleep at night wasn't the right way to put it. He couldn't sleep at night, yes. But that only happened when the moon was out, and especially so during nights of the full moon. And if he tried to sleep at those times, he would become extremely restless with his spirit energy starting to rile up. Though during moonless nights such this one, he would be able to sleep. Though she supposed that due to his usual condition of being unable to sleep at nights when the moon was out had affected him enough that he couldn't sleep even during such a dark, moonless night. She continued to watch him for a bit, as he was lost in his stargazing, before a soft smile played on her lips. Despite his condition, her son still seemed to have a strong liking towards the night. She then began to take silent steps towards him, noticing that he still wasn't aware she was there which he normally he would have. Even for someone born within one of the four great noble clans, her youngest was born with exceptionally high spirit energy, due to which he had gained a high spiritual awareness. 
But despite that exception prowess he was still just a four-year-old child and would only be aware of the beings around him if he were to pay attention to his surroundings, something he wasn't doing right now as his entire focus was on stargazing. When she reached him she bent down and picked him up before placing him on her lap, causing Naruto to look up once he felt himself being picked up and his bluish-gray eyes lit up when he saw the smiling face of his mother, Kachan. Naruto said with a big smile as he wrapped his arms around her. Asanoha laughed lightly as she too wrapped her arms around Naruto's small frame. Naruto-chan, you're still awake? She said as her laughter died down, I thought you said you wanted to go to your brother's graduation ceremony tomorrow. Asanoha asked as she smiled down at Naruto. MHM. Naruto nodded with a smile. Then shouldn't you be sleeping right now? Asanoha began as she looked down at her son's smiling face. The graduation ceremony is going to be held early in the morning, if you don't sleep, you're going to miss it. Asanoha finished as she looked into his bluish gray eyes, which used to be the same shade of gray as her own but over the years had begun to gain a bluish tint to them. Something she supposed he got from his father seeing as his father's eyes had a bluish tint to them as well. Though a part of her was disappointed that her baby's eyes weren't the same shade of color as her own now. Another part of her loved the new color of his eyes finding them beautiful, and she especially loved how they seemed to have a part of both herself and her husband. Naruto nodded. Yes, but I'm so used to sleeping at night that now I just don't want to sleep. Naruto answered still holding onto her with a smile on his face. Asanoha nodded her head, she knew as much. Naruto then let go of her and turned around, returning to his stargazing as he settled himself in his mother's lap. Asanoha waited till he settled down before once again wrapping her arms around him as the mother and son duo sat there gazing at the stars while talking to each other late into the night. The next day finds Naruto walking by his mother's side as she held his hand within her own. Both were on their way towards the Shino Academy where the graduation ceremony was supposed to be held. They had stayed awake gazing at the stars and talking to each other till early in the morning, just before sunrise, and had woken up so late that they could only hope that the graduation ceremony wasn't over. Though looking at the people leaving the Shino Academy gates as they neared the place, it was most likely that the ceremony had already ended and they had missed it. As the two continued with their walk towards the academy, they were greeted by many who would bow respectfully as they passed by. Being from two of the four great noble clans did that to people as those from the lower noble clans or other Shinigami tended to treat them with greater respect and being the daughter-in-law and grandson of the 6th division captain and current head of the noble Kuchiki clan who was respected almost on the same level as the captain commander of the Goti I-13 and the elder sister and nephew of the current 10th division captain and the head of the noble Shiba clan, who was renowned and greatly respected for his immense strength and power, only served to have people be even more respectful towards them. As the two finally reached the gate and entered, they began to look around when Naruto's eyes lit up once he saw the people they were looking for. Nichan, Tochan, Ji-chan. Naruto called out to get their attention which he seems to have succeeded in as it not only got their attention but also his mother's, who too turned her attention towards the three. As they made their way over to the three, both of them noticed the Shiaku Shubyaku Yao is now wearing, confirming his status as an official Shinigami of the Goti I-13. Though they didn't know which division he was assigned to as Byaku Ya had two reserve seats, one in 6th division under his grandfather Jinrei Kuchiki and one in 10th division under his uncle Ishin Chiba. A captain's meeting was to be held early in the morning today to determine the divisions each of the graduates would be assigned to. Even though for the noble Kuchiki clan, it was possible for Byaku Ya to skip the Shino Academy entirely and just graduate and be assigned to a division. Jinrei had still insisted that both Byakuya and Naruto attend the traditional academy once they were of age as it was customary for everyone in the Soul Society aiming for the path of Shinigami. Though despite that, Byakuya had still completed the six-year course in just a single year, and graduating at the age of 15, he was considered a genius. There were even those who said that Byakuya was going to succeed Jinrei as the 6th division captain in the coming years which wasn't such a vague claim seeing as Sojin didn't have any interest in becoming a captain despite possessing the skills. He just wasn't fond of fighting. When they finally reached them, Naruto immediately let go of his mother's hand and latched himself onto his brother's leg and looked up at Byakuya. So, you're a Shinigami now Nichan, Naruto exclaimed as he smiled up at him, what division are you in? Are you with Tochan and Jichan or are you with Ishin Jichan? Like any normal kid, Naruto just adored and looked up to his big brother, always going around following him or watching him train and even asking his big brother to play with him and Byakuya didn't seem to mind in the least. In fact, he loved Naruto just as much and showed a very protective side when it came to him. He looked at Naruto and smiled as he put his hand on Naruto's head and ruffled his hair affectionately before replying, Hello, Naruto. Yes, I am an official Shinigami now, in 6th division under father and grandfather, 
Byakuya said with a proud grin aimed at his little brother, who returned it with a matching grin of his own. Asanoha then approached her sons with a smile and went to give Byakuya a hug. Seeing this, Naruto let go of his brother's leg and went to stand beside his father. Congratulations, Byakuya. She congratulated her eldest feeling proud of his accomplishment. So, 6th Division ha. Huh? I probably should have known that was where you would be assigned to, she said as she let go of him and glanced towards her father-in-law and then her husband who smiled at her. What? Did you think that Byakuya was going to be assigned to the 10th Division, Asanoha? Sojin asked his wife with a smile that looked as if he was a little amused for some reason. I did actually, seeing as how Byakuya and Ishin are quite fond of each other. Asanoha answered as she went over to stand beside her husband and Naruto. Byakuya scoffed, please. I am definitely not fond of that lunatic. Byakuya said, denying his mother's claim which earned a chuckle from all of them, even Jinrei. Sure, you're not, Asanoha said still chuckling. Byakuya looked annoyed and was about to retort when he suddenly felt something and his hand flew to the hilt of his Zanpakuto that was attached to his hip and started to look around. This seemed to have put a stop to the others chuckling when they saw Byakuya suddenly becoming on guard and looking around as if searching for a hollow or something. What is the matter, Byakuya? Jinrei asked calmly though with mirth in his eyes. I thought I felt something. Byakuya answered as he looked around confused, was I just imagining it, he said once again, relaxing his guard and letting go of his Zanpakuto's hilt. Though just as he relaxed his guard and turned his to face his parents he was met with a foot becoming intimate with his face. The attacker had the appearance of a man in his mid-twenties. He had short black hair with noticeable sideburns, he was wearing the standard Sinigami uniform, with a sleeveless captain's haori. This man was Ishin Shiba, the captain of the 10th division and the current head of the noble Shiba clan. He was also the brother of Asanoha Kuchiki, making him the maternal uncle of Byakuya and Naruto. Ishin's sudden appearance had not surprised any of them as they had sensed him even before his sudden kick to Byakuya's face, including Naruto, except for Byakuya. The feeling is mutual, Ishin said to Byakuya with a smirk as he looked down at him. Who would be fond of an obnoxious little punk like you? Asanoha just shook her head at her brother's antics. Oh, brother, Uncle Ishin. Naruto called out happily completely unfazed by the fact that his dear big brother was just kicked in the face by his uncle, as even he knew that it was common occurrence between the two. Ishin turned around when he heard his name being called. Hey, Naruto. Ishin immediately went over to Naruto and picked him up. How's my favorite nephew doing? He exclaimed once again as he lifted Naruto to the level of his eye level and grinned at him. Naruto on the other hand just gave a delighted laugh as he was picked up by his uncle. Asanoha gave a sigh when she heard her brother refer to Naruto as his favorite nephew which he would always say after he and Byakuya have one of their daily bouts just to get his anger riled up, as despite always bickering with each other all the time, Ishin and Byakuya were actually very close. And it was a known fact that Byakuya looked up to Ishin a great deal. Even though Byakuya looked up to his grandfather as a leader and clan head, he looked up to Ishin as a Shinigami and as a captain. This was proven by the fact that he would mostly go and train with Ishin when it came to the Shinigami arts and he also made it a personal goal of his to surpass the Shiba clan head. So it would always somehow get him annoyed at being referred to as the unfavored nephew. Sojin and Jinrei in the meanwhile looked at the scene before them with amusement and chose to remain silent for the moment. While Byakuya on the other hand was beginning to twitch with anger and annoyance from where he lay on the ground before finally exploding. What the hell? Byakuya shouted as he shot up and pointed an accusing finger at Ishin. Couldn't you arrive normally for once? He demanded of Ishin with anger, as he would always attack Byakuya whenever he would visit the Kuchiki clan manor, or when he saw him anywhere for that matter, which his uncle would always claim was a part of his training, to keep him on his toes at all times. And as much as Byakuya hated it, he had to admit that it was rather effective. Ishin, who was playing with Naruto, stopped and turned his head over to Byakuya, no. He answered simply before handing Naruto over to Sojin who then carried Naruto in his arms as Ishin turned to face Byakuya. You seem to have gotten rather lax, he said to Byakuya in a rare moment of seriousness before a taunting grin broke on his face. Why, has all praise for graduating from the academy in a single year and being called a genius gotten over to your head? He asked in a taunting manner, you were able to sense me for a bit there but then relaxed your guard without being sure what it was that you sensed. You seem to have forgotten all that I taught you. Ishin finished as he shook his head in mock disappointment. Byakuya's face turned red with anger and embarrassment when he heard that, seeing as it was true. He had always been taught to always be on guard and especially so when you weren't sure of what is out there, and when he had sensed his uncle for a moment there, he had chalked it off as his imagination. 
But in his defense neither his parents nor his grandfather had reacted in the least so he had also relaxed his guard thinking it was nothing. Now that he thought about it though, he probably should have known it was his lunatic of an uncle when they hadn't reacted. As Byakuya stood there unable to retort to that, Ishin suddenly came at him and aimed a kick to his chest. Byakuya's eyes widened for a moment before he quickly crossed his arms and caught the offending leg. He then raised his head to face Ishin as his gritted his teeth with a strained smile on his face as his left eyebrow twitched violently. You didn't think that it would be that easy, did you? Byakuya exclaimed to Ishin as his smile widened. Oh, so the little brat has gotten a little better, has he? Ishin said to Byakuya, not phased a bit, but are you getting cocky with just that? He taunted Byakuya as another wide, taunting smile spread on his face, don't be too full of yourself, I still have my other leg. He exclaimed as he kicked Byakuya in the face with his other leg, causing Byakuya to let go as he was sent crashing to the ground a few meters away. Why, you? Byakuya gritted out through his clenched teeth as he slowly got up, but before he could charge at Ishin, Asanoha decided that enough was enough. All right, that's it you too, she stated as she went over to the two to stop them before they got things out of hand. When she reached Ishin, she grabbed his ear without warning and started pulling it, while Byakuya wisely chose to stay where he was. Ow! 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 That really hurts Nei-chan! Ishin cried out in pain. Shut it! was the only response Asanoha gave to Ishin's cries of pain as she glared at him causing him to stop and gulp, before turning and glaring at Byakuya. Byakuya, seeing his mother's glare, too gulped and was about to take a few steps backwards just to be safe, but before he could his mother already had a hold of his ear and had started pulling on it together with Ishin's. This isn't the time or place for you two to be fooling around like this, Asanoha scolded as she began to berate Ishin and Byakuya for acting like little kids, while the two could only say I'm sorry repeatedly in a desperate attempt to stop her from pulling on their ears. The others in the meanwhile just watched with amusement as Asanoha berated the two while Naruto was laughing, apparently finding it all very funny. And besides, isn't it time for you to be going back to your division barracks, Asanoha said as she finally let go of their ears and the two began to desperately rub their ears to soothe the pain. Yes, but what about you two? Byakuya asked as he stopped rubbing his ear. We came here because we wanted to attend your graduation ceremony, but since that is long over with and we have already congratulated you we will be going back to the Kuchiki clan manor. Asanoha answered. Also isn't it about time for you three to return to the 6th division barracks, since it's going to be Byakuya's introduction into the division, she said to Byakuya, Sojin, and Jinrei. And you, she began as she turned her attention to Ishin and glared intensely at him. You are going back to your division as well. She finished as she continued to glare at him daring him to defy her as she knew that he was going to leave his captain's duties to his lieutenant and go laze around somewhere. Ishin's head dropped at that. He was initially going to ditch everything and go find a nice, comfortable tree somewhere and take a nice long nap and afterwards maybe go and flirt with some hot female Sinigami. But now he knew that there was no way for him to ditch his work. Somehow, his sister always knew if he ditched his duties, and when she found him lazing around, he shivered. That was too painful for him to even think about. Yes, it is indeed time for us to return to our division, Jinrei said, agreeing with his daughter-in-law as he addressed his son and grandson. Come, it is time we are on our way. So Jin nodded his head and went over to his wife and handed Naruto over to her before he and Byakuya stepped forward and stood beside Jinrei, prepared to get going. Ishin let out a sigh as he too prepared to go back to his division barracks. Well, guess I'll see you guys later then. He said as he ruffled Naruto's hair and nodding his head at the others before disappearing in a flash step. Once he left the others also bid each other farewell, before going their separate ways. As Jinrei together with Sojin and Byakuya went to the 6th division barracks, Asanoha and Naruto began to make their way back towards the Kuchiki clan manor. It was night time in the Soul Society and we find the Kuchiki family eating dinner together. Naruto was sitting besides Byakuya, while sitting across from them were their parents and sitting in the head position was Jinrei. They continued to eat in silence before Asanoha asked something that has been on her mind. What seat did you get assigned to Byakuya? She asked as she looked at her eldest. Hmm? Byakuya looked up at his mother when he heard that. Oh, I am the fifth seat for now, but that's going to change soon. Oh, is that so? Asanoha said with a smile. Yeah well, right now I may be just a fifth seat, but I am aiming for the captain's position so I am going to train even harder. Byakuya replied with a look of determination, and besides, the third and fourth seats weren't all that strong. The only thing they had that I lacked is experience and now that I am a Sinigami, I can get that experience. Hmm. You may be correct about that but what makes you think you can become captain so soon? Jinrei said as he looked at Byakuya with the same calm look he always wore. Jinrei of course, 
had no doubts about Byakuya's talent and potential, and he was certain that in a few decades Byakuya was going to surpass even him. Well, I do know that you are looking to retire soon and father has no interest in being captain so that only leaves me to fill in that position. Byakuya replied as it was well known that his grandfather was looking forward to retiring soon, along with his father retiring from his Hinegami duties as well. While his father will be succeed his grandfather as clan head, he won't be succeeding him as captain due to health issues and his general dislike of fighting. And when I do become captain, I will have surpassed both you and Uncle Ishin. Oh, so that is your goal? To surpass me and Ishin? Jinrei asked. Yakuya nodded his head with a look of sheer determination. Sojin and Asanoha smiled at their eldest. They both knew he had a strong desire to surpass both his uncle and grandfather. That was the goal to accomplish which he would spend countless hours training. After all, Asanoha turned her attention to her youngest son who was paying more attention to his food, but she knew that he also was aware of the conversation happening around him. What about Yunaru-chan? Asanoha asked getting his attention as he looked up from his food to his mother, do you also want to become a captain as well? She asked which got the attention of the other three males as well as they stopped for a moment and looked at Naruto. It was well known that because of the abnormal amounts of Rier Yoku that Naruto was born with, he had unimaginable potential. So much so that even the captain commander of the Godii 13 had taken notice of him. So she was curious about what her youngest planned to do with such potential. It may be a little early to be asking such a question but she couldn't help it. Naruto gained a thoughtful look at that. Before looking at his mother, I don't care if I become a captain or not. Naruto spoke, I just want be strong enough to protect you, Tochan, Nichan, Ji-chan and Ishin Ji-chan. He finished with an earnest smile, the other in the room all smiled at that too. They knew that the intention behind that was nothing but childish innocence, but it still warmed their hearts that he wanted to protect them. Naruto himself didn't know what made him say that as he hadn't really had any goal in mind at that point, but when he had thought about it, that had been the first thing that came to his mind. Something that even his four-year-old mind could understand was exactly what he wanted to do with all his strength. That night, Naruto made a promise to himself, that he would become the strongest Shinigami to protect all those he held precious to him. Time skip, Naruto age 6. It has been two years since that night when Naruto made that promise to himself. Things had been pretty normal these past two years with no significant changes except for Byakuya now being the third seed of the 6th division. Over these past two years, Naruto's desire of protecting his precious people hadn't diminished in the least. In fact it has grown even stronger since that night he made that promise to himself. For some reason, the simple thought of losing even one of his precious people had scared him greatly. He couldn't understand why that was but all his young mind could comprehend was that he didn't want to lose any of them. And today he would take the first step towards completing that promise. Today he would begin his training towards becoming a Shinigami. A now six-year-old Naruto stood across from his grandfather in a small clearing in front of the Kuchiki clan manor. He was wearing black Hakama pants and a white kimono top as he stood across from his grandfather who had his arms crossed over his chest, ready to begin his training. To the side, sitting on the grass, was Asanoha who had a smile on her face and to the other side stood Sojin with Byakuya as they watched and waited for Jinrei to begin the first day of Naruto's training. Jinrei looked at Naruto with an intense stare, which Naruto seemed to return with a determined look of his own. Jinrei continued to look at his grandson for a while before uncrossing his arms as he took a step forward before opening his mouth to address Naruto. Alright Naruto. Now, we shall begin. Your form is too rigid Naruto and your swings are too hard. Try to relax or you might end up straining your body. Byakuya instructed from where he stood beside Naruto with a Bokudo in his hand as the two brothers trained in Zanjutsu. Keep in mind Naruto, there is no strength in swordplay based off of force. When you swing, each stroke must be delicate and precise. Byakuya lectured, reciting one of the many lessons he had learned from Ishin. Naruto nodded before taking a deep breath as the grip on his own Pokudo relaxed but remained firm nonetheless. We will go for a hundred swings and practice what I just said. Byakuya instructed once more as he took a stance followed by Naruto. Ready? One, two. In that late morning air, standing within the gardens of the Kuchiki clan manor, the two brothers continued on with their daily training undisturbed and it was only when they were nearly done that a voice called out behind them. Well, you two sure are working hard. The two brothers turned, wiping the sweat from their foreheads, and their faces lit up when they saw their grandfather standing behind them with his arms crossed in the sleeves of his shayakushu while giving the two a barely noticeable smile. Ji-chan. Grandfather. Naruto immediately went over to his grandfather and hugged him around the legs with Byakuya coming to a stop in front of Jinrei who had placed a hand on Naruto's head. You haven't been around as of late, grandfather. It's good to see you again. Yakuya greeted, sounding happy. 
It has been a while since he last saw his grandfather and he was the third seat of the 6th division. But then again it was just one of those times when only the captains and lieutenants knew what was going on. However, from what he knew, not even most of the lieutenants knew what had been going on, except for his father, this time around. Yes, it indeed has been some time since I was last here, has it not? Jin Rei agreed calmly. Having not been at the Kuchiki clan manor for about the past two weeks and while normally, he would much prefer to stay over at the manor, certain circumstances would sometimes leave him with no other option than staying at the barracks. So you'll be staying over here again, Ji Chan? Naruto asked as he finally let go of Jin Rei and smiled excitedly up at him. Un. Jin Rei nodded. That is correct. Which reminds me, I brought a guest over. A guest? Both Naruto and Byakuya asked at the same time curiously, wondering who could be visiting at this hour. Guests of noble families usually only visited during the evenings. Byakuya got the answer when he suddenly felt two soft mounds at the side of his face and immediately his face contorted into an annoyed one. He didn't need to look to know who this guest was. It's you cat monster, Byakuya exclaimed, swinging his bokuto at the culprit's head. Yuruichi Shihoan laughed as she leapt back, dodging the swing expertly as she appeared a couple of meters away from Byakuya. A cat monster? Is that what I get for taking the time to visit? came her witty remark as she smiled cheekily at Byakuya. I never asked for you to come visit. Byakuya rebuked fiercely, in fact, I'd prefer it if you don't visit. He demanded with vigor but stopped when he noticed that Yoruichi wasn't paying attention to him anymore but rather was staring intently to his left. He instantly got a bad feeling when he took notice to just where or rather who she was looking at. Meanwhile, Naruto was staring right back at the lady that had appeared out of nowhere. She had dark skin, short purplish black hair and golden eyes. He guessed that she was a captain seeing that she was wearing a captain's haori, though her shayakushu was different from his grandfather and uncle's, it was sleeveless and backless. He continued to stare at her curiously, wondering who the pretty lady could be. His brother and grandfather knew her so she obviously couldn't be a stranger but Naruto hasn't seen her before today. Looking at her still, Naruto was reminded of a cat. A feral hellcat that is. Naruto blinked. A hellcat? For some reason, when he thought of a hellcat, the image of a huge cat with a flaming blue body and two tails appeared in his head. Before he could ponder on the random thought though, Yoruichi had suddenly appeared right in front of him, her face inches away from his own, still staring at him silently. Naruto, not knowing what to do in this situation, did the only thing that his six-year-old mind could think of. He tilted his head slightly to the side before, hello. Greeting innocently, he blinked once. Yoruichi's face broke into another grin. Let me guess. You're Naruto. He regarded her with a confused look. Ah, uh, yeah. Nice to meet you, I'm Yoruichi. She glopped him in a hug without any warning and buried his face into her chest, before proceeding to hug the life out of him. She seemed so engrossed in her own excitement that she didn't notice, or perhaps simply choose to ignore, that Naruto was turning blue from a lack of oxygen and trying but failing to get out of her hold. Seeing the danger that he seemed to be in. Jinrei decided to go to the rescue of his grandson when Byakuya beat him to it. Let go of him, Byakuya demanded as he swung his bokuto at Yoruichi's head again, who once more evaded by disappearing in a shunpo. Naruto, are you alright? Byakuya inquired his little brother as he went over and knelt down in front of him. Naruto could only nod his head as he took huge gulps of air into his lungs to catch his breath. Did you really have to interrupt our bonding time? Byakuya's head snapped back towards Yoruichi who was standing a couple of meters away from them with that same cheeky grin on her face. What bonding time? You were about to suffocate him to death, you boob monster, Byakuya exclaimed angrily at Yoruichi who only laughed at being called a boob monster which did nothing but cause Byakuya to get angrier. Stop these games of yours, they're not fun, is that so? Yoruichi said mischievously before disappearing from her spot and reappearing right besides Byakuya who couldn't react in time as Yoruichi took the red headband tying his hair in a ponytail, and by the time Byakuya swung his bokuto at her again, she had already disappeared once more. They may be games to you but I'd be worried about the clan's future if a mirror girl could take a headband from its heir's head so easily. Yoruichi commented as she waved the red headband from where she stood atop a wall. Byakuya's eyebrow twitched violently at that remark. There is no way he was going to let that one slide. Stay right where you are Yoruichi Shihoen-san. Byakuya began to say as he seemed to slump slightly to the front before looked back up at her with a fierce gaze, you have yet to see my shunpo. In fact, I am about to prove to you that my shunpo is far superior to yours. Why don't we see about that then? Yoruichi said one last time before disappearing and was immediately followed by Byakuya who wasted no time in chasing after her. That Byakuya. There is no telling how far he will go if he can just learn to control his temper. 
Jin Rei shook his head as he witnessed whole exchange between his eldest grandson and fellow captain and clan head, Ji Chan. A now recovered Naruto began as he clutched onto his grandfather's Hauri. Who was she? Jin Rei simply patted Naruto's head slightly before addressing him. Since your training got interrupted, why don't we go and have some tea? I can introduce you later. Un. Naruto nodded his head before following his grandfather as the two made their way through the gardens of the Kuchiki clan manor. It only took the two a short walk to reach the veranda right by the gardens of the manor, and instantly, Naruto's face lit up when he saw his mother sitting there, looking graceful as ever as a maid servant served her some tea. Wasting no time, he rushing forward and climbed onto the veranda. Kachan. He called out happily, glomping her into a hug. Naruto-chan. Asanoha gave a light laugh as she hugged Naruto back. Done with your training already? Naruto shook his head negatively as he let go of his mother. We got interrupted and now Nichan is chasing some lady around. Naruto answered as he took a seat to his mother's left. Asanoha nodded her head before turning towards Jinrei who had taken a seat on the veranda in front of the two. Otto-sama, good morning. Asanoha greeted as she bowed her head slightly. Un, a very good morning to you too. Jinrei nodded his head as he accepted the tea served to him. I take it the matter has been dealt with. She questioned about the matter that has had the captains busier than usual for about the last two weeks and seeing Jinrei at the manor again and at this hour no less, she could only guess that everything has been dealt with. She has, of course, been aware of the happening since the beginning, for the most part, but I would not say it is dealt with just yet. Although, it will be by the end of the day. Jinrei answered calmly while sipping his tea. I see. Asanoha closed her eyes, understanding what he meant as well as knowing what it meant for one of her friends. In any case, Yoruichi. She called out, seemingly to no one. At that very moment, Yoruichi appeared on the veranda out of nowhere as she smiled sheepishly. It's been a while Lady Asanoha. She greeted, giving a bow. Indeed it has. Asanoha nodded her head at Yoruichi. Now I would appreciate it if you would stop making my son run around the manor as if on some wild goose chase, she said with a stern look on her face and Yoruichi knew that she wasn't asking, she was telling her to stop. Yoruichi in turn gave a barely noticeable sigh. It seems like her fun time came to an end. No matter how much she may love teasing Byakuya, it was that you just don't defy Lady Asanoha Kuchiki. Besides, Asanoha was the one person she respected above everyone else and would never even think of acting out of line in front of her. She then proceeded to take a seat to Asanoha's right and her face broke into another grin when she noticed that Naruto was giving her a slightly wary yet curious look as he clutched onto his mother's sleeve. It was at that moment that Byakuya also appeared on the veranda looking a little out of breath as he glared at Yoruichi. It hadn't taken him long to realize that Yoruichi Shihoen wasn't fast, no, she was ridiculously fast. In fact, the only person he could think of who was definitely faster than her was his mother and so he had lost, lost badly. Yuruichi couldn't help but grin when Byakuya finally appeared. What took you so long? I was just about to go looking for you, she teased as she stopped playing peekaboo with Naruto while Asanoha merely shook her head. Byakuya though, went red in the face at Yuruichi's words. For all his boasting earlier, he hadn't been able to keep up with Yuruichi at all. He then took a deep breath to calm himself. Getting angry won't accomplish anything, he'll just have to train harder later on dash. Good morning Byakuya. It seems that today just wasn't his day as just when he was about to take a seat, he once more felt something connect to the side of his face and his world turn over before he found himself slammed hard into the wooden wall of the manor which shattered upon contact. Well hello there punk, it's been a while. Ishin greeted, grinning like mad. You have no idea how much I've been itching to beat the ever lovin' snot out of you but couldn't during the few times I saw you within the first division barracks for the sake of formalities but here, if possible his grin grew even wider at that point, here your fair game. Yakuya at this point had gone red in the face to the point that he was actually steaming with his eyes having gone completely wide from where he lay into the broken wall and as if things couldn't get any worse, a piece of wood that was barely hanging above him broke and tauntingly hit him on the head. It's just one thing after another. Yakuya gritted out from clenched teeth. Why don't you give it a break already, you damned shitheads? Perhaps it was a stroke of bad luck, or perhaps misfortune, or maybe even fate but at that very moment, Naruto turned to his mother and asked with all the innocence of the world, Kachan, what's a damned shithead? Every single person, including Jinrei, stilled at those words while Byakuya and Ishin went ghostly white before the others, except for the two, studied Asanoha with caution. Who, for her part though, continued to calmly and ever so elegantly sip her tea before turning her head and smiling beautifully at Naruto, whatever could you be talking about Naruchan? There were no such words, Naruto blinked. There weren't, but of course silly, 
you must have misheard, she said with certainty, still smiling as she patted Naruto on the head gently. He seemed to ponder on it for a bit before nodding his head in acceptance. After all, his Ka-chan said so and there was no way that his Ka-chan was wrong. Which reminds me, Asanoha began as she put her now empty teacup down and turned to the still ghost white Byakuya and Ishin, Byakuchan, Shinchan. She addressed with sweetness dripping from her words and smile, there is something of utmost urgency that I need to discuss with you too. Byakuya and Ishin slowly and shakily turned their heads towards her and if possible, even their hair turned white when they saw her smiling face. The two of them then once more slowly turned their heads towards each other, with Byakuya slowly getting up and standing right in front of Ishin, and came to a mutual agreement. They had to get the hell out of there. Before they could even move a muscle though, Asanoha had appeared right beside them and placed a hand on each of their shoulders and gripped hard. Would you please follow me? Despite her smile and kind voice, it was not a request. And at that moment, the two of them knew, there was no escape. Like criminals convicted to death, the two reluctantly and obediently followed Asanoha as the Fasuma closed almost ominously behind them. The other three left behind could only watch in silence as a hollow wind whistled around them. Yuruichi Shihoan tried to not let it bother her, she honestly did. But the two idiots really were getting on her nerves. How was she supposed to enjoy her tea with them bawling like babies? She casted another look at the two sitting on their knees right next to each other with their hands fisted over their thighs as they bawled, their right cheeks and ears looking mysteriously big and red. In another situation, she might have wondered about what had happened to the two but as things stood, she knew she was better off not knowing. Oh. She turned her head towards Asanoha who seemed to have perked up suddenly. Is something the matter, Lady Asanoha? Asanoha turned to her and smiled. Oh no, it's nothing. I just have to go and prepare Sojin's lunch is all. She answered before getting up from her sitting positing. Yuruichi nodded her head before realizing something. Come to think of it, I haven't seen him today. Where is he anyway? He is away on a reconnaissance mission to the South Rukongai, District 78, in Missouri. She answered before turning to her two victims, not at all faced by their current predicament. Now you two behave all right, she stated, sounding almost delightful. Yib. Shu. Barry. Shui. Asanoha merely smiled before excusing herself. Throughout the entire exchange no one noticed the mischievous grin that broke on Naruto's face when he heard his mother's words. You are going to get the both of us in trouble, you do know that right? Byakuya asked, now dressed in his shayakushu with his zanpakuto strapped to his side and a fairly large bento carried in his hand. No we won't. Kachan agreed to me going with you. Naruto replied with a grin as he happily walked beside his brother as the two made their way through District 78. I see, Byakuya gave Naruto a suspicious look but made no attempt to press any further. Knowing what a tricky little fox his younger brother can be, who knows what he must have pulled for their mother to have agreed. Deciding to put it out of his mind for now, Byakuya focused on the road ahead of them as the two neared their destination, a deserted part on the outer side of Inuzuri with a few rundown houses here and there along with a forest further up ahead with Shinigami scattered all across the area. Coming on the scene, they noticed their father giving orders to his 6th division subordinates and Naruto wasted no time to shout out to his father as he waved at him excitedly which seemed to have caught his attention as he turned to their direction with a surprised look appearing on his face. Naruto then ran up to his father with Byakuya following after in a slower pace and immediately glomped him in a hug. Tochan, hey, Naruto. Sojin smiled at his youngest son and ruffled his hair lightly before looking up at Byakuya who caught up. This is a surprise. You two decided to bring my lunch for me today. Something like that. He replied. The only reason he had decided to bring it was because Naruto had insisted to come along. Accepting the bento offered to him, Sojin raised an eyebrow but didn't say anything. After all, if they were here then it must be with his wife's permission so he guessed it was fine. What were you doing here Tochan? Naruto asked as he looked around him in something akin to awe. This was the first time ever that he had stepped outside of Serete so he couldn't help but feel excited. Passing the bento over to the Shinigami beside him, who gave a nod in return before leaving, Sojin couldn't help but smile as well when he saw the obvious happiness of his youngest son. Oh, we are here to dash. Before he could finish, a large explosion happened behind him followed by a loud roar. He turned his head to the scene and stated when he saw the shadow of a large figure amidst the cloud of dust. Ah. It's here. Naruto immediately clutched onto his father's Hakama pants when he saw the thing that came out of the dust cloud. It appeared to be some kind of large humanoid monster with purple skin, a white mask and a hole in its left pectoral area, and was about three times the size of his father. However, what scared Naruto wasn't its appearance but rather its Reiatsu. It was heavy, dark and malevolent. And that accompanied with the fact that he could actually feel its bloodlust and hunger, froze Naruto in his place. 
This thing meant them more than just harm. He wasn't the only one though. Byakuya was also looking at it with beads of sweat tickling down his forehead. While his sensing ability wasn't as advanced as Naruto's, he was still proficient in it. He could tell, this thing's Reiatsu was monstrous. It went above and beyond from that of the ordinary hollows he was used to dealing with. Father. Is this? Byakuya asked his father to confirm his suspicion. Yes, an Ajacha. Sojin answered as he studied the intermediate great hollow with narrowed eyes. This one in particular is rather good at hiding its rear yoku which made it difficult for us to track. So then why? He trailed off. Why was it showing itself out in the open like this? What do you think? Sojin paused. It's because of the three of us. Three people possessing the levels of spirit energy like we do was simply too much for it to resist. He finished before preparing to go and take care of it when he saw that his men were unable to detain it. Yakuya, take Naruto and go. He did not want to risk his sons getting hurt in the process. Tochan. Naruto clutched onto his father's Hakama pants a bit tighter as he looked up at him with worried eyes. Seeing his youngest son's worried look, Sojin smiled reassuringly and patted him on the head. Don't worry Naruto, I am going to be just fine. Looking at Byakuya, he once more said seriously, now go. Yes, father. Understanding the situation, Byakuya nodded his head. Come on Naruto. Taking Naruto's hand, he immediately started to hurry away from the scene. However, before they could even make it a fair distance away, he was halted by Naruto's shout, Nichan. Turning his head in time, his eyes widened when he saw a crimson red Saru headed their way. Of course, it's going after them. They were easy prey. Pulling Naruto close to him, he immediately started to draw his Zain Prakuto. However, the speed and power are off the charts. I will not make it. And true to that, before his Zain Prakuto was even halfway drawn, the Saru was already upon them. However, just before it could reach the brothers, the Saru was split into two and passed harmlessly by their sides. Naruto and Byakuya stared wide-eyed as their father stood in front of them with his sword drawn. Byakuya went to say something but one look at his father's face stopped him in his tracks. Byakuya, get going. Sojin said before slowly raising his sword and pointing it at the hollow standing meters away from them. His rear yoku spiked with that gesture before purple Reiatsu erupted all around him. The eyes of every single Sinigami including Byakuya's widened when they saw the action. Lieutenant. A Sinigami nearby exclaimed before jumping away followed by the others. Naruto for his part was confused. What were they all so scared of? Turning to his brother, he noticed that Byakuya also had the same expression of panic. Nichan? He asked confused, which got his attention. We have to get out of here Naruto. Father is about to release his Zan Prakuto, Byakuya stated before proceeding to picking up his younger brother and preparing to flash step away from the scene. Naruto was still confused and simply turned to look at his father and just before they disappeared, he managed to hear his father call out the name of his Zan Prakuto. Whisper, Muramasa, Nichan, wait. Just when they had made it into Inuzuri, Naruto suddenly called out to Byakuya out of nowhere. Realizing they were a fair distance away, he stopped and turned to Naruto, still in his arms. Sorry about that Naruto but father's Zain Pakuto can be rather dangerous to inexperienced Sinigami or if you don't have considerable enough rear yoku as it will affect you if you are too close to dash, that's not it. He shook his head as he cut off Byakuya. It's about that thing, there are more of them. Byakuya's eyes widened when he heard Naruto's words. What do you mean more of them? He closed his eyes and his brow frowned in concentration. 6. No 7 more. They don't feel as strong as the one Tochan is fighting and other Sinigami are heading their way but. Naruto trailed off as his frown deepened before his eyes snapped back open and he looked at Byakuya with urgency. Someone's in trouble Nichan. What are you talking about Naruto? Explain. Byakuya asked of Naruto seriously, his Sinigami mode kicking in. The Sinigami are going towards them but one of them is about to get to someone. The other Sinigami won't make it in time Nichan. We are the closest ones. Understanding the severity of the situation Byakuya nodded. Alright Naruto, tell me which way are they? Byakuya asked seriously. Even though Naruto's sensing prowess was curious to him, he realized now wasn't the time to look more into it. He wasted no time in pointing towards Byakuya's right. It's that way Nichan. Byakuya nodded his head before Flash stepping towards the direction. She couldn't move. In another situation, she would have thought that maybe it was because of her injured leg but that wouldn't explain why she couldn't move her arms or the rest of her body for that matter so she guessed that it was most likely because of the thing. She didn't know how else to describe it though looking at its bug-like body, the white mask and the hole in its abdominal area, 
she could guess that it was one of those hollows she had heard the passing Sinigami talk about. The hollow took another step towards her with its mouth open and salivating. It was strange she thought. Here she was, literally being stared down by death and she didn't feel a single shred of fear, all she felt was, regret. Perhaps that was because she realized the hopelessness of her own situation. She was tired, she was sleepy, she was hungry, she didn't even have the energy to speak much less cry out for help and besides, it's not like there would be much point seeing as how there wasn't anyone else around to help her. And yet, none of it even mattered to her. All she could even think of in this situation was the one she had thrown away, the little sister she had abandoned. She didn't want to die. She knew she didn't want to die, not without seeing her baby sister again. And yet, that was exactly what was going to happen here. She was going to die without ever getting to see her sister again and a part of her felt that this was exactly what she deserved, to die without even getting to see her face. I'm so sorry. Rukia. She closed her eyes in resignation and waited for the hollow to come get her. It never came. Instead she heard a voice call out, Scatter, send Benzakura. She opened her eyes again in time to see the hollow get ripped to shreds by what appeared to be cherry blossom petals before someone appeared right in front of her, a Sinigami she guessed, seeing that he was wearing the traditional Shayakushu and Kari design Pakuto. He was quite good looking she supposed. He appeared to be around her age and had this regal air about him. He also had a small kid with him who appeared to be around the age of 6 to 7 and looked to be a smaller version of the older boy with shorter hair and a blue tint to their otherwise identical grey eyes. She didn't need to look at them twice to know that they were nobles. Taking notice of the Sakura petals from earlier, she watched in fascination as they all floated over to the empty hilt in the older boy's hand and formed the blade, turning her eyes over to the two again. She watched curiously as the older one put the younger one down and sheathed his sword before kneeling down to her eye level. Are you alright miss? He asked in genuine concern which she honestly found surprising as most nobles would never concern themselves with those of the lower class. Don't be silly Nichan. of course she is not alright. The younger boy answered on her behalf as he gave his Nichan a teasing grin and she watched in concealed amusement as the elder brother flushed slightly, no doubt at having his professional attitude broken and by his own chibi no less. He then coughed in his hand and simply said, right. The younger boy then turned to her and lost his grin as he gave her a worried look. She's not doing so good Nichan. She blinked in surprise when she heard that. It seemed that despite his young age he was quite perceptive. We have to get her to Unahana Teiko right now Nichan. It's not just her injuries but her rear yoku is also about to disappear. She looked at him in astonishment at that. Although she knew nothing about spiritual arts, she did know that rear yoku was a soul's life force, those souls that did possess it anyway, and guessed that that explained her current condition. Still. She had no idea her current condition was that bad. Though it seemed that she wasn't the only one as the eldest of the two was also looking at the younger one with what she guessed was a surprised look as he only had raised an eyebrow as he regarded his little brother. How can you tell all of this anyway? The younger one blinked at that. I. He trailed off as his brow frowned before he crossed his arms and closed his eyes in a gesture that indicated he was thinking hard and she couldn't help but find him absolutely adorable at that moment. No doubt, if she could move right now. She would be squealing and hugging the life out of him, his status as a noble be damned. Finally after a while of trying to think up an answer, he looked up at his big brother. I just do, he said simply as he tilted his head to the side. If her circumstances were different, she would be giggling at the adorable gesture and on the other hand, just by looking at older boy, she could tell that he was resisting the urge to palm his face. Now whether at his own question or at his younger brother's answer was anybody's guess. What are you waiting for Nichan? Hurry up and pick her up already so we can get going. Pointing towards her, the younger one said to his big brother once more as he looked up at him and she felt her cheeks burn ever so slightly at the thought of being carried by a boy, and someone this attractive no less. I know that but. He trailed off as he looked at her a bit uncomfortably. She didn't even need to guess what he was so uncomfortable about. Come on Nichan, we have to hurry. As the younger one pressed further, she could make out the slight upturn of his lips as his eyes danced with mischief. She came to realize that the he was already aware of his big brother's inconvenience and was actually having fun with it. I know but it is going to be hard to carry two people while Flash stepping back to Sarate A. He argued, or at least tried to argue, but she could tell that while what he said seemed true enough, he was still mostly just uncomfortable. Think of it as training then. If you Flash step while carrying the two of us it will be good practice for your Shunpo. That seemed to effectively put an end to their little argument as the older brother tried but failed to come up with anything after that. That is true I suppose, he relented after a bit of pondering before giving a sigh. Very well then. He conceded before turning towards her, completely missing the grin that his younger brother shot at him. Alright miss, there is no need to worry. 
We are going to take you to a medic so I ask you to trust us. It might be weird for a Sinegami to ask for someone to trust him normally but she understood where he was coming from. Most people form the Rukan guy were rather distrustful of them after all. Being unable to respond to him, she just sat there and stared at him with undoubting eyes. Apparently, finding his answer he nodded his head before gathering her on moving form into his arms. He then turned his head and looked behind him. Come on Naruto, it is time to get going. A few moments later she took notice of the younger one, Naruto, grinning down at her from over his brother's shoulder. Slowly and shakily her own lips formed into a small, barely noticeable smile and before she knew it, the world around her had become nothing but a blur. Now that the excitement of the moment had died down, she came to realize just how tired she actually felt. Her eyelids slowly started to close shut as exhaustion finally took its effect and there, she fell asleep in the sanctuary of her savior's arms. When she woke up again, her mind groggy and her vision blurry and unfocused, she had no idea where she was nor how she got there but she felt strangely warm and comfortable. Blinking a few times to clear her vision she could distinctively make out the sound of people talking though not as to what was being said. Ah, you're finally awake I see. She turned her head to her right and saw a mature woman looking down at her with a gentle smile. She went to make a move to sit up with the older woman immediately coming to her aid before offering her a glass of water after she sat up on the bed. Drinking the glass of water empty to relieve her parched throat, she looked around to see that she was in some medically equipped room with herself lying on a bed with white sheets before she turned to the woman to her side and asked, where am I? The woman once more smiled gently at her before answering, You are within the 4th Division Barracks and I am Retsu Unahana, the captain. She perked up in shock at those words though before she could say anything Unahana continued, You were brought here by Byaku Yakun and Nara-chan after having a run-in with a hollow, she said gesturing towards the bed right to the side of hers. Following Unahana's hand her eyes widened when she laid eyes on the two boys sitting there, also looking at her with the younger one raising his hand and muttering a yo. While grinning at her and everything came back to her, her going on the search for her sister, getting injured by the sudden hollow attack and then getting saved by the two. She immediately bowed her head. I am forever grateful for your help, Yakuya-sama, Naruto-sama. Thank you. She thanked the two sincerely as not only had they saved her from the hands of death but had also preserved her hope for finding her little sister. She kept her head bowed even as she was met with you are welcome and no problem from Byakuya and Naruto respectively. Hishana-san. Finally raising her head, she was met with the serious face of Unahana. There is the matter of the condition you were brought here in that I would like to consult you with. She fully sat up at this and waited for her to continue. You should know that your condition was not caused by the hollow attack. She looked at Unahana in surprise at those words. The injuries you received through the attack were mostly just superficial and nothing serious, and as you can see, I had no trouble healing them. She blinked and silently studied herself to see that her previous injuries were indeed gone completely. However, despite the minor injuries, you were brought here in a near critical condition. Do you know why? I'm sorry but I... I don't know. She shook her head negatively, not having an answer though she could probably guess the cause. I will put this in simple terms then. You see, when souls possessing rear yoku do work, they utilize that very spiritual energy doing so, and the more they work, the more rear yoku is spent. And it is not just fighting that costs us our spirit energy but also mundane tasks such as walking or doing simple chores also utilizes spiritual energy granted. Much less than any fighting but they cost us our spirit energy nonetheless. Do you follow? She nodded her head at Inahana. So when the rear yoku levels have diminished after a long day of work, the soul begins to feel signs such as hunger and exhaustion which are basically signals telling the soul to stop and replenish the lost energy. In those times it is crucial for the soul to eat properly and rest well to recover its rear yoku as rear yoku is essentially the life force of the soul and should it disappear completely, then so too will the soul, becoming reishi. Do you understand where I am going with this? She couldn't help but flinch slightly at the look Unahana gave her and couldn't say anything thing in return as she did get where she was going. Your condition, Hishana-san, was caused by a rear yoku overexertion. Now I am sure you are aware of this but you are in possession of a considerable level of rear yoku. Unahana gave a pause here and studied her with a critical eye, I will be blunt with you Hishana-san, but by the time you were brought here, your soul should have already disappeared. Her eyes widened at those words. Even though she had already guessed the cause of her condition, she definitely had not expected to be dead by now. You have literally been working yourself to death, all the while not allowing your soul to rest properly nor eating properly. In fact the only reason your soul has remained intact is through sheer willpower. Now while I find that to be impressive, I would still like to know Hishana-san, 
What could have been so important that you would disregard your own life yet at the same time refusing to die? While Unohana waited patiently for an answer, she bit her lower lip in thought. After a while of thinking, she decided to tell them. They had saved her life when they didn't have to so the least she could do was tell them the reason behind her actions. I was looking for someone. My baby sister. Looking up for a bit. She noticed that Inohana as well as Byakuya and Naruto were listening to her attentively. A few months ago, I, along with my baby sister who was about a month old died in the world of the living and arrived at Inuzuri. She stopped for a bit as images of her time in Inuzuri came back to her. It was hard. But what made our situation worse was that I had a considerable amount of spirit energy so I was prone to collapsing, sleepiness, exhaustion and hunger and I wasn't the only one, Rukia, my baby sister also had spirit energy of her own. Though minute. It was enough for her to be fussy. After the first couple of months, I came to realize that if we stayed together, we will not survive. She clutched the bedsheets as the weight of her own decision weighed heavily against her. While still in Inuzuri, I learned that for people possessing spirit energy like I do, there were only two ways to survive. First was by becoming a Shinigami. She once more paused and thought of her frail body. I had no interest nor the fighting talent to become a Shinigami so that only left me with the second option which was by finding some place to work. I, her eyes burned with unshed tears as she recalled leaving her precious little sister behind and going off on her own. Promising that I will come back for her, I left Ruki at a common care place for the small children who arrive at the Soul Society and went to search for a job. I wandered around for about a week with no luck before collapsing near the edge of Serite and it was by pure chance that an old married couple stumbled upon me before I had died of starvation. The old married couple happened to own a small tea house in the Serite near the border. She couldn't help the small smile that came over her lips at the thought of the kind old couple that treated her as their own. After nursing me back to health. They gave me the position of a waitress around the tea house. Her smile was still in place as she recalled the old couple waving her off and telling her that it made their job easier as they were too old to do it themselves. After her thousand bows of gratitude, her smile melted off her face however, as she recalled what happened next. I was happy that I finally had a job to sustain both myself and Rukia so I went back to get her the next day. But when I got there, she paused as her eyes stung with hot tears, she was gone. I asked around the care place but none of them knew where she was, or more like couldn't be bothered with what became of one measly kid. She gritted out, recalling the words said to her by some of the seniors at the care place. So I went to search for her myself. I searched everywhere but couldn't find her. Her lips quivered as she recalled helplessly searching for her little sister without any luck. All of that happened about a month ago. Now every day after getting off work, I would go looking for her. After finishing her tale, there was silence in the room before she heard Unahana speak. So it was because you were searching for your younger sister that you neglected your health? Yes. She answered without raising her head. I am sure that you are fully aware of this, being a former resident of Rukongai, but District 78 is not a place where a newborn can survive without adult supervision. You may not want to hear this Hishana-san but, stop. She didn't want to hear it. Your little sister may already be dead, or she may still be alive somewhere. She closed her eyes shut tight and bit into the quivering lower lip as teardrops fell over the back of her fists and on the bedsheets. After her sudden outburst, there was silence within the room for a long moment before Unahana spoke once more. If that is how you feel then there is nothing else for me to say. Saying that she could hear Unahana walking away before stopping. You are free to leave at any time you wish. While your condition was serious enough, you were brought here on time and I was able to fully restore your spirit energy. In any case, I would advise staying here for the night. After she gave her last minute advice, Unahana walked away leaving her alone in the room with Byakuya and Naruto, both of whom were silent which she was grateful for. She did not want to hear those two of all people, the ones who had preserved her hope, saying it was hopeless for her to continue searching. She did not want to hear them telling her to give up. I am not going to tell you to give up. Hishana's head snapped towards Byakuya with her eyes widening when she registered what he had just said. They had left the 4th division barracks a while ago with Byakuya and Naruto offering to walk Hishana back home. She had of course tried to refuse, saying they had already helped her enough but they had insisted on walking her safely back home. So after accepting their generous offer, the three of them were now walking towards the tea house. Their trip up to that point had been silent, with all three immersed in their own thoughts, when Byakuya had suddenly spoken out of nowhere. Looking at him with wide disbelieving eyes still, she couldn't even form any words. Of all the things she had expected him to say, this was not one of them. Byakuya though, did not turn towards her before continuing, I am not going to claim to understand your situation, nor am I going to say I know the hardships of living in the Rukongai. 
However what I do understand is your position as an older sibling. He paused as he looked over at Naruto from the corner of his eye, and I do know that if in a moment of weakness I was forced to leave Naruto behind, he trailed off and turned to look at her with a fierce look in his eyes, I will go find him, or die trying. Her eyes widened even further at those words as she could do nothing but stare at him with something akin to fascination while Byakuya stared right back at her with eyes filled with unwavering determination. The two of them continued to just silently stare at each other for a while before realizing what they were doing and slowly they went red in the face as Byakuya's eyes also widened and immediately the two looked away from each other. P thank you. Hishana muttered shyly as she fiddled with her floral pink kimono while looking at the ground. You won. Byakuya nodded in response as he looked the other direction. And just like that the air around the two turned incredibly shy as the two walked side by side silently. Meanwhile, Naruto was looking at his Nichan and the girl he just dubbed as Nichan with wide eyes filled with wonder. Unfortunately, while Naruto was good at sensing the bad emotions of those around him, he had trouble getting anything else so what was happening in front of him was totally new to him. In the end he settled on observing the two walking in front of him with rapt interest as they walked shyly beside each other. The rest of their trip was spent in complete silence as two of them were too shy to speak and the third one was too wonderstruck to say anything. When they reached the tea house, Yakuya immediately recognized it as this particular tea house was quite famous among the Sinigami. Being situated right by the border of the Serete, Sinigami going on or returning from missions would always stop by for refreshments. Yakuya himself had stopped by here a number of times with either his uncle or father and grandfather. Seeing that they had arrived at her destination, Hishana turned to Byakuya and Naruto and started to speak Byakuya-sama, Naruto-sama dash. You know what Nei-chan? Naruto cut her off as he grinned up at her, you can just call me Naru-chan. Hishana couldn't help but smile at the little bundle of joy. More than anything else, Naruto was the one who sparked her hope of finding her little sister. When she had witnessed him bickering with Byakuya and yet at the same time looking up at him with obvious adoration in his eyes, she had realized that she wanted this. She wanted her little sister to look up at her with such love and adoration. She wanted to have what Byakuya had with Naruto. Well then, Naru-chan. Byakuya-sama, she added Byakuya's name a little shyly while giving him a short glance. I know it's not much but I would like to show my gratitude. So if you would like to come inside I can treat you with a cup of tea and some dango. She offered as she bowed. Byakuya and Naruto looked at each other for a bit. Both wanting to take her up on her offer however, as much as we would like to take you up on that offer, I am afraid it is already late enough and if we don't make it home soon then we will get in trouble. Serious trouble. Byakuya almost shivered as the smiling face of his mother came to his mind. Oh. Hishana looked down in disappointment. She had wanted to spend a little more time with the two. Looking at her dejected face made Byakuya want to just accept her offer but his newfound liking to this girl was no match for the terror that was his mother. But if that offer still stand, then maybe we can come visit some other day? The smile he got in response made Byakuya feel quite pleased with himself and was enough for him to almost smile too but when he took notice of Naruto looking at him and Hishano with a critical eye, he stopped himself. If Naruto got any ideas then his life was going to become infinitely harder. In that case I will be patiently awaiting your visit, Hishana said happily. Very well. Now we must be on our way, come Naruto. Byakuya addressed Naruto before turning to leave. Be sure to take care. He bid her one last time before starting to leave. Bye bye Nei-chan, take care. Naruto waved at her as he grinned before following his brother. I will. You two take care as well. Hishana bid her farewell as she smiled the two before giving one last bow and walking into the tea house. As Naruto caught up to his big brother, he looked up at him and grinned before commenting excitedly, I like her. Can we have that visit tomorrow? Sure. Realizing his slip up, Byakuya coughed with light pink dusting his cheeks. If that is what you wish then of course. Naruto merely grinned and happily continued to walk beside Byakuya. Yep, he was right. His Nichan also liked her. There you are. The two nearly jumped when Ishin appeared in front of them out of nowhere. One look at his serious face and the two realized that they were in serious trouble. Ishin was only ever serious when the situation was no laughing matter. Hello uncle, what are you doing here? Byakuya asked nervously. The two of you are gone for a while now so I came looking for you. Ishin answered seriously as he walked over to the two. We actually have good reason for being late Uncle Dash. Never mind that. Let's just get going. Ishin cut off Byakuya as he picked up Naruto and placed a hand over Byakuya's shoulder and the three immediately disappeared in a flash step. When they reappeared within the living room of the Kuchiki clan manor, the first thing they noticed was their parents and grandfather sitting around a table over which was a rectangular wooden box with golden ornaments decorating the sides and top. Ah good. You are here. Jinrei commented once they arrived. What's going on? 
Naruto asked noticing the serious atmosphere. Let's go take a seat first. Everything will be explained then, Ishin said to Naruto still in his arms as he made his way over to where the others were sitting and was followed by Byakuya. Placing Naruto beside his mother, Ishin took a seat beside Jinrei with Byakuya taking a seat by his father. Now I am sure you two are wondering about the situation but before that, you two have not been made aware of what has been happening this past month have you? Jinrei addressed his two grandsons once everyone was seated. Naruto and Byakuya looked at each other before shaking their heads negatively. Um, I thought as much. Jinrei started to speak, looking at the two, you see, what happened is that about three weeks ago, the 12th division captain, Karyo Haikafuden was promoted. Promoted? Byakuya asked confused, as in she was promoted to Central 46? No. Not Central 46. It was Ishin who answered. She was promoted to the Royal Guard, Division 0. Byakuya's eyes widened as he looked at Ishin with shock written all over his face while Naruto for his part was merely confused. Can a captain even get a promotion and what was the Royal Guard anyway? He certainly hasn't heard of any Division Zero before. Seeing Naruto's confused face, Jinrei addressed him. Naruto, I am sure that you do not know of the Royal Guard and Division Zero just yet, and I will explain it to you at a later date, but for now all you need to know is that the Royal Guard is the division that is charged with the protection of the Royal Palace and the Soul King. Soul. King? Naruto felt a strange familiarity to that name but didn't know from where. He knew he hadn't met any Soul King before so then why? The King of Soul Society? How did he know that? Yes, all the adults in the room looked at Naruto but remained silently. Wait a minute, Byakuya exclaimed, catching their attention. A promotion to Division Zero? Is something like that even possible? I understand what you mean Byakuya. Jinrei commented, something like this has never happened before. Division Zero has always comprised of a set of Sinegami who contributed to the founding of the Sinegami organization along with the Captain Commander. There has never been a promotion to the Royal Guard throughout the entire history of the Godi I-13. However, that is not the reason for which we are gathered here today. Naruto and Byakuya waited patiently for their grandfather to continue. The reason we are gathered here today is this, Jinrei said, looking at the box sitting on the table. Byakuya and Naruto also turned to the box and looked at it curiously. Was this box somehow connected to the Royal Guard? Just this evening, when the Royal Guard came for Kirio Haikafune, one of them approached me and handed over this box, Jinrei said before looking at directly at Naruto. It was addressed to you, Naruto. A gift from the Soul King himself. Naruto tilted his head to the side and blinked a few times. Me? Yes. Jinrei nodded his head before pushing the box towards Naruto. Why don't you go ahead and open it Naruto? Naruto looked at the box in slight wonder before nodding his head. Uh, reaching over, he slowly tugged at the lid before lifting it up. He blinked once more when he saw that inside the box was a necklace, a jade greed crystal attached to a black string, and below the string was some kind of crimson red cloth. Taking the necklace in one hand, Naruto, with the help of his mother pulled the cloth out of the box to see that it was a long crimson scarf. It was much longer than the one Jinrei wore. Delicately examining the scarf in her hand, Asanoha narrowed her eyes before turning to the others. Do you feel it? The other adults nodded their heads positively. The quality of this scarf is much greater than the one I wear but that is not it. There is this. Aura about this scarf as well as that necklace. Jinrei commented while studying said objects closely, I suppose it is to be expected of gifts from Soul King himself. What? Naruto began as he turned to the adults, should I do with them? You are to wear them Naruto. Jinrei stated firmly, throughout the entire history of the Soul Society, the Soul King has never gifted a single person. Wear them with pride and honor. Naruto looked at the others to find them smiling encouragingly at him before he looked at the items in his hands. He didn't know why the Soul King would send him these gifts but from the way Ji-chan spoke, it was a pretty big deal. Clutching onto them tightly, he came to a decision. He will wear them in some day, he will ask the Soul King as to why did he send these gifts to him. Until then, he promised to never lose them. Shinarei Jutsuin, or more commonly known as Shino Academy. Founded by Genryu Saishigakuni Yamamoto some 2000 years ago, it was originally known as Genji School before he proceeded to create the Sinigami organization known today as the Godi I-13 and was renamed to Shinarei Jutsuin. Alongside the Royal Guard, it is the only institute in Soul Society that doesn't fall under the direct control of the Central 46. Within the Soul Society, souls hopeful for becoming Sinigami are all required to go through the institute first and complete a six-year curriculum before they can proceed to become members of Godi I-13. And that of course includes the nobles. Now granted, the four great noble clans have enough influence to bypass the academy and proceed directly to become Sinigami, 
In order to keep up the tradition of Serete, it has been an unspoken agreement within the four great families to always have their children go through the institute first, while it was a must for the lower noble clans to proceed through the academy. However, among the children from the four great noble families there have been those who are known to have cleared the six-year curriculum within two to three years with even those who have completed the entire course within a single year. Such were the thoughts that ran through the head of the now 14 years old Naruto Kuchiki as he stood before the gates of Shino Academy. He was dressed in the traditional academy uniform which consisted of a blue shitagi, a white kosode with blue stripes, blue hakama pants, with white socks and sandals. There was also a circular symbol on both breasts of the outer shirt, which appeared to be the emblem of the academy. Over the uniform, Naruto wore the crimson red scarf he got from the Soul King along with the jade crystal necklace hanging around his neck. Lastly, he wore a fingerless black deco that covered the back of his hand and looped up to attach at the base of his fingers. Being the youngest son of two of the four great noble families, it was, of course, expected of Naruto to also clear the six-year course in a similar manner. However, unlike those that came before him, Naruto's situation was a bit unique. Due to his abnormal rear yoku even by the standards of the four great noble clans, Naruto has always had a bit more attention than most. Even while growing up, he has always been told by the Kuchiki clan elders that the clan had high hopes for him and though his family had never told him as such so to not pressure him, he knew that they also had high hopes from him and especially so after being gifted from the Soul King. However, it wasn't just his family. Amongst all the candidates that have entered the Shino Academy this year, Naruto was the one the Godii 13 had their eyes on the most. So as such, he knew that he had to clear the academy within a year, and anything less was unacceptable. Not that he was worried though. He can take whatever the academy dishes out on him. Naruto-chan. He was broken out of his musing by his mother calling him before he turned to face his family who had come to see him off on his first day of the academy. Ishin, looking around and taking notice of the fact that they were the only ones around the gates, turned to Naruto and grinned broadly. This late at your first day of the academy. Clearly I have taught you well, Ishin exclaimed dramatically before hugging Naruto while crying what appeared to be tears of joy, I'm so proud. The others, used to Ishin's antics by now weren't even phased, though they did found it amusing. Asanoha though, was less than amused. Stepping forward, she grabbed Ishin's ear before prying him off of Naruto. Ow! 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 That hurts Nei-chan, paying Ishin no mind, Asanoha turned and smiled at her son. About that, she started to say, referring to his lateness, we have already informed the academy about your special condition so you don't have to worry about it. Naruto nodded in acceptance. Honestly, while he couldn't care any less about nobility and despite how stuffy it can get at times, he was sometimes glad to be a noble. If only because he could get away with causing trouble or doing whatever he wants. Now remember Naruto-chan, Asanoha began to say once more without letting go of Ishin, always pay attention to what your professor says and be extra careful with your Kido and combat classes. Even the slightest mistakes can have unpleasant consequences. I don't think we have to worry about Naruto messing up how. Ishin began to say but was cut off when Asanoha pinched his ear harder. Still not paying her brother any mind, she continued to smile sweetly at Naruto. Be sure to also make some friends Naruto-chan. You don't need many, just a few wonderful ones are enough. Ishin suddenly perked up at that and grinned suggestively at Naruto. Also be sure to befriend some cute girls Naruto how. He began to say once more while stressing the word befriend when he was once more cut off by Asanoha who pinched his ear extra hard this time before turning her attention to him. My son will do no such thing. Asanoha firmly stated before she began to berate Ishin for even suggesting something like that to her baby boy, Naruto-chan. Naruto for his part merely sweat dropped. You would have thought that by now his uncle would have learned to not anger his mother, but surprisingly not. Although, he didn't exactly see any problem with befriending a girl. But he didn't say that out loud. Chuckling lightly Sojin averted his attention from his wife berating her brother and onto Naruto. In any case, just keep a level head and take it easy Naruto. You shouldn't have any trouble getting through, he stated, smiling at his son before turning to the others. Now I believe we have stalled Naruto enough. He is late as it is, we don't want to stall him anymore. Though the statement was said to them all, it was mostly pointed to his wife and brother-in-law. I agree. Byakuya choose that moment to step forward. He had to be by the first division barracks for some reports and as Hinegami can never be late when meeting with the captain commander. Turning to Naruto, he offered him a small smile, I would wish you luck Naruto but I believe you have no need for something like that. Naruto returned his smile and nodded before something struck him as he watched Byakuya prepare to leave. 
A mischievous grin broke on his face before he decided to mess with his brother, say hi to Hishana and Achan for me. Yakuya froze at those words with his back turned to the others. Hishana, the heads of everyone present snapped to Byakuya, even Asanoha stopped berating Ishin whose face broke into something that could only be described as a shit-eating grin. Meanwhile, Byakuya mentally cursed his younger brother. Although, he would not say that he hadn't expected this, in fact, it surprised him that it took Naruto 7 years to say something about Hishana before their family, his timing couldn't have been any worse. He couldn't deal with this right now. And so Byakuya did the only thing that seemed to be the most effective action to take. He flash stepped the hell out of there. Naruto laughed out when he saw his Nichan actually running away. Ah! He fled! Exclaiming, Ishin jumped to his feet before immediately a grin broke on his face and he prepared to give chase. But try as he might, that punk is a 100 years too early to outrun me. Wait. Before Ishin could take off after Byakuya, he was stopped by Asanoha. But Nechan. You can't really let him get away with this, he exclaimed, turning to his big sister. After all the attempts had it made to corrupt his eldest nephew but had failed at every single one of them, there was no way he was going to let him get away without answers after learning that he was apparently involved with someone. Oh trust me, I won't, she stated with certainty while giving him a look as if she was going to let her son get away without answers with a matter like this. Despite how much he wanted to just go and hunt down Byakuya before beating some answers out of him, he had to relent after his sister gave him a look telling him to drop it. Leaving Byakuya aside for now, I believe we have wasted Naruto's time enough. Jinrei who had been silent up to that point began, effectively putting a stop to the commotion before he turned to address Naruto. Naruto. I want you to know that this is the point beyond which you will come in terms with your power. Naruto immediately stood attentively in front of Jinrei as his grandfather began to speak and waited patiently for him to continue. His grandfather's words were always to heed and learn from, even the other three were also silently listening to Jinrei. Now I am sure you are aware of this Naruto, but you have been blessed with a great deal of power, Jinrei stated as he stared right into Naruto's eyes who stared right back with an unwavering gaze. For the past 8 years, we have been training you in strength and making sure that your body is prepared to handle that very power, to make sure that you were prepared for this very point and beyond. Jinrei then stepped forward and placed a hand over Naruto's head. Remember to always have a strong heart that will keep you away from becoming overconfident. Jinrei finished as he gave Naruto a small smile which Naruto returned before he turned to leave but not before addressing Ishin. Come along Ishin, it is time you and I are on our way. Ishin nodded along. They did have a captain's meeting today in regards to this year's graduates. Turning to Naruto, he grinned and ruffled his hair. Before I go Naruto, he leaned forward and whispered into Naruto's ear, the academy classes other than practice and combat are boring and tedious, so make sure you have something to do. I would personally recommend sleeping through them, that's what I did. After saying his piece, Ishin immediately jumped back to where Jinrei stood to avoid his sister's anger. No doubt, she had heard him telling Naruto to basically slack off during the academy. He then grinned and gave a wave. We're off so take care Naruto. Jinrei also nodded in agreement before he and Ishin disappeared. Naruto in the meanwhile, couldn't help but find his uncle to be awesome. From the way he spoke, it was obvious that Ishin hadn't paid any attention to his classes and had mostly just slept through them and yet he had not only graduated from the academy within a single year but had also made captain within a little over a decade of joining the Godi I-13. Do not heed what he just told you Naruto. He turned to look at his mother to find her shaking her head in exasperation. Sighing, Asanoha turned to Naruto and smiled before going and giving him a hug which he gladly returned. Just be careful and make sure to come home immediately afterwards alright? She couldn't help but fuss as she tightened her hold on his frame before letting go and kissing him on the forehead. Naruto nodded before stepping back and prepared to go but not before turning to his parents and grinning at them. Tochan, Kachan. I'm off now. He waved at them getting smiles from them both before he turned and walked into the academy gates. Is something the matter? Sojin asked his wife as he turned to her and found her looking at Naruto's retreating back with a small and perhaps a little sad smile on her lips. I just find it ironic is all, she began to say as she rested her head on her husband's shoulder when she felt him take her hand in his, for souls like us, time is of no essence. We don't age. We don't grow old. Our outward appearances are but manifestations of our mind and spirit. And yet. She trailed off and squeezed her husband's hand tightly as she watched Sun's form disappear from view. I can't help but feel that both Byakuya and Naruto. They are growing up too fast. Kissing her gently on the head, he whispered. I know. Walking along with empty corridors of the academy, Naruto couldn't help but feel that maybe he was lost. He has been walking for a while now but has yet to find his classroom. He shrugged the thought away though. 
the place was just too damn big and he should be reaching his classroom soon. With that, he continued on, a bit of more walking and a couple of turns later, Naruto finally found his classroom. Class number 1, the special accelerated program. Wasting no time, Naruto went and slid the door open before entering. Upon his entrance the first thing that Naruto took notice of was the large bald man standing at the front of the class who turned to look at him the moment he entered. Ah, you must be Naruto Kochiki. The man said, addressing Naruto while both of them ignored the murmurs that began once the man called Naruto's full name. I am Gangoro Wanabara, the head teacher of class 1. He merely nodded in response before walking over to the man. I hope I'm not late, he said to the teacher before taking a look around the classroom. It was fairly small compared to the other classes with large desks that can be used by up to 4 people. The class consisted of only about 20 students, most of which were from the lower nobles clans, he could make out. Oh no! The cause has yet to begin. When Naruto raised an eyebrow at him, Gangoro elaborated, I had just finished giving the welcome speech so I would say that you are on time, also considering the fact that you are a special case. After saying this Gangoro gestured towards the class. Now why don't you take a seat and we can begin the class. Take any seat you want. He nodded one last time before starting to make his way to the back of the class all the while ignoring the gazes that followed his every move. Finally, he stopped by a desk right at back of the class that was occupied by three people. All three appeared to be around his age and amongst the entire class, were the only ones whose rear yoku came closest to his own. The first one, sitting at the other end of the desk was a girl with short black hair styled in a heim cut and grey eyes. Naruto noted that she appeared to have a slightly shy demeanor. The second one, sitting in the middle was a boy with short, spiked, white hair and turquoise eyes. He seemed to have a cold aura around him. Wait, no, it's not that he had a cold aura but rather his rear yoku itself was cold. However, his cold spirit energy aside, he seemed to have a detached demeanor. He was also on the short side. The third and last one was another boy with unusual silver hair, very sharp features and was quite thin. He also had his eyes narrowed to slits along with a wide, mocking smile playing on his lips which seemed to give him a rather unnerving air but Naruto couldn't sense any negative emotions coming off of him so he guessed it was fine. Hey, you don't mind if I sit here do you? Naruto asked as he grinned at the three. The response he got was two of them the girl and the white-haired kid, looking at him like he just grew a second head while the silver-haired one didn't seem to be affected at all. Naruto guessed that the reaction from the first two was to be expected as it must have come off as weird for a noble and someone from two of the four great noble clans and with a family like his to actually be polite and ask and not just be seating himself. However, they must not know that he came from a house that had Lady Asanoha Kuchiki as the matriarch. While she could be much more lenient towards fooling around with family and close friends, she was intolerant towards impoliteness anywhere else. So she had enforced some manners into both Naruto and Byakuya. Although, he did found the reaction of the third one to be curious. He didn't seem to find it one bit odd and just continued to smile. Oh on, go right ahead. The silver head said with his smile present all along. Thanks, I'm Naruto by the way, Naruto Kochiki. He introduced himself as he took a seat beside the silver haired kid, at the right end of the desk. I'm Jin. Jin Ichimaru. He introduced without even the slight change coming in his demeanor. Naruto nodded before turning towards the other two, Toshiro Hitsugaya. The white haired kid introduced simply before turning his attention towards the front, Shaolin Feng. The girl introduced herself as she gave a short bow. Naruto grinned at all three. Cool, it's nice to meet you. Before anything else could be said, Gengoro called out for attention, all right, settle down everyone. It's time to begin the class. You can all talk afterwards but for now just listen here. Hearing those words, he turned his attention to the front as the teacher began with the class. Manji Chan wasn't kidding when he said these classes are tedious and boring. Thought Naruto as he got up from his sitting position and stretched. Although it has been interesting to study about rear yoku and its different types, Naruto couldn't believe he had been sitting at the same spot for hours. He had never sat at a single spot for this long before and couldn't be any gladder that the lunch break started when it did or he just might have gone crazy from being unable to move while the teacher donned on and on about Reiatsu, rear yoku, and Reishi. Heaving a relieved sigh before turning to his three seatmates to find them also preparing to go eat lunch. He suddenly grinned as a thought struck him. Hey I know. Naruto suddenly started causing the other three to turn to him, why don't we go have lunch together? He proposed while grinning at them. Jin, seeing no reason to deny, just shrugged in acceptance. Shaolin also saw no reason to deny and nodded her head. Toshiro though, seemed about to deny when Naruto didn't give him the chance. Great. Then let's go and have lunch, he said cheerfully before starting to move out of the class followed by the others. Hey wait a minute. 
I never said Toshiro began to protest when he was cut off by Naruto. Don't worry about it. Lunch is much more fun when you have someone to eat it with. He commented as he draped an arm around the shorter boy's shoulder and started to all but drag him out of the class. Like I said dash, now where should we have lunch? Would you even dash? I guess a under a nice tree will do. Listen to what dash. The other two watched in amusement as Toshiro tried but failed to argue as the stubborn Kuchiki didn't even give him the chance to finish as all four made their way towards a place to eat lunch. You know, pouting like that makes you appear more like a kid than you already do. Naruto commented offhandedly to Toshiro as he started unwrap his rather large, dual compartment, black bento with golden designs decorating it that was prepared for him by his Kachan. He, along with his three new friends, to Naruto anyways, were currently sitting under a fairly large tree at a more secluded part of the academy. Once they had settled themselves under a tree, Naruto had offered to share his bento with Jin once he had noticed that he only had dried persimmons for lunch that he had been happily munching on while ignoring everything else. Naruto's proposal had earned him a confused look from Jin who had for the first time lost his smile before once more shrugging and chalking it off as one of the weird Kuchiki's weird quirks. I am not a kid. Toshiro snapped heatedly. Oh right, forgive me. You're not just a kid, he was about to sigh at that being over with when Naruto continued, you're a short kid with hair like an old man. Naruto once more commented offhandedly as he lifted the lid of his bento. That's not what I meant. Toshiro once more snapped with tick marks appearing all over his forehead. Naruto though, paid Toshiro no mind as he brought out two pairs of chopsticks, courtesy of his mother. After handing one compartment over to Jin, he dug into his lunch with newfound vigor. They all ate their lunch in silence after that. It didn't take long for Naruto to finish his lunch before stretching and leaning back against the tree. Looking at the three, he decided to ask something that was on his mind. So tell me, why did you guys decide to become Sinigami? The Kuchiki asked, catching their attention as they seemed to think it over for a bit. Why I decided to become a Sinigami? Jin asked to himself as he put his chopsticks on his chin and thought. Oh right, I decided to become Sinigami to change things. No one but Naruto noticed the slight twitch that came to his smile as he said those words. He did raise an eyebrow though when he felt a strange yet familiar negative emotion coming off of Silverhead. It wasn't directed at any of them though but it was directed at someone. He didn't get to ponder on the thought more though as Toshiro spoke up at that moment. It's not like I have a particular goal or anything in mind for wanting to become a Sinigami, he trailed off as his hold on the bento tightened slightly, I decided to become one to control this power of mine from hurting those around me. Naruto understood what he meant. He didn't need his advanced sensing power to feel the clumsy control that Toshiro had demonstrated so far and honestly, if he didn't have the great level of Rira Yoku, much greater than Toshiro's, then he was sure he too would have been affected by the cold spirit energy. Finally, he turned his head to Shaolin who fidgeted slightly before answering. I, had no choice really, she started to say, looking down at her bento, I'm from the Feng clan, and it is tradition for every member of our clan to all make it to the on Mitsukido and anyone who fails is exiled from the clan. Ah yes, the Feng clan. He of course knew of them. They were a lower noble clan that was affiliated to the Shihoan clan and served directly under the clan head, which just so happened to be Yoruichi. All the members of the Feng clan were part of on Mitsukido's executive militia. What about you? Naruto turned to Toshiro who had just spoken. Why did you decide to become a Sinigami? Who me? Naruto started before a grin broke on his face, well I decided to become a Sinigami so I can become the strongest to protect my precious people, he stated proudly. That's an odd reason for wanting to become a Sinigami. Shaolin commented as she stared at Naruto a bit weirdly along with Toshiro. They had not expected that to be the Kuchiki's reason for wanting to become a soul reaper but then again, Naruto had proven to be quite weird from the short time they have known him. He didn't act anything like a noble of the four great noble clans would. You think so? Naruto asked before shrugging. But for me, I have always believed that a person is truly strong when they have something or someone precious to protect. Hearing his response, Shaolin and Toshiro looked at each other before pondering on it. While this was happening, no one noticed that Jin had lost his smile at Naruto's response and even had his eyes open, revealing two sky blue orbs that stared at the raven head unreadably. Suddenly feeling sleepy. Naruto stretched before giving a yawn. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take a nap. Wake me up when the break is over, he said, closing his eyes before getting comfortable against the tree and instantly falling asleep. When Naruto opened his eyes again, he didn't know where he was but what he did know was that he certainly was not within the Shino Academy anymore or even the Soul Society for that matter. Looking around and studying the world that he suddenly found himself, 
The first thing that he noticed was that it was nighttime and he clearly remember falling asleep during the day. Looking up, he saw that the night sky was an infinite kaleidoscope of colors with a crescent blood red moon and not even a single star along with the outlines of uniquely shaped and rather tall hills extending over the sky. Turning his gaze around him, Naruto noticed through the fog that wherever he looked, thick forests were all he could see but what he found strange was that despite trees covering the lands, the ground underneath his feet was solid concrete. Actually, now that he took a closer look, he could make out the ruins of civilizations everywhere. He looked at the ruins strangely and couldn't help the strange feeling with a twinge of sadness that came over him, before turning his head to the weirdest thing of all. There, right in front of Naruto was the strangest building he had ever seen. It appeared to be some kind of castle and was extremely large. Covered in shadows of the night, it appeared to be quite ominous. He gulped. He was really afraid of ghosts, never mind the fact that he himself was a soul but souls and ghosts were different. He reasoned, and this weird mansion appeared to be the very definition of haunted. However, Naruto knew that he had no choice other than going over to the structure because as far as he could sense, there wasn't anyone else in this whole world aside from him and the presence he could feel from within those walls. And he didn't know how to describe it but he felt this. Tug from within him that wanted him to go to whoever this rear Yoku. Gulping once, Naruto began to make his way towards the building. As he continued on with his walk. He looked around and took notice of even more rubble littered around and when he made it out of the forest and into the clearing right in front of the towering structure, Naruto froze. All around him and the castle was the most number of ruins and it didn't just show a fallen civilization but also bared signs of war. War that brought about the end of the people. However, it wasn't the aftermaths of war that froze Naruto in his place. No, it was the otherworldly Reiatsu that drowned the immediate area. This close, he could almost make out the visible image of the pitch black spirit energy that covered the stone entity like a blanket. Naruto had never felt anything like this. This spiritual pressure was so dense and powerful those of even his family couldn't compare to. He felt like he was having trouble breathing from the heaviness that the Reiatsu was causing to the air. However, what Naruto found odd was that the rear Yoku was strikingly similar to his own. In fact, it almost felt like they were one in the same but not. He gulped again with beads of sweat tickling down his forehead and with shaky steps he started towards the entrance. After just a short walk, Naruto found himself standing in front of the large front doors. He clenched and unclenched his fists and pondered on what to do but didn't get the time to come to a decision when the double doors opened on their own. Seeing that whoever was inside was basically inviting him in, he decided he had no choice but to enter, and enter he did. Walking inside. Naruto came upon what appeared to be a very large living room with one side completely made out of glass windows and at the center of the room was a very large table with many chairs lined up on both sides. However, he couldn't concern himself with any of that because right before him was the very source of the abnormally powerful rear Yoku. There, at the other end of the table and directly in front of Naruto was what appeared to be a throne with a single figure sitting on it. Both the figure and most of the throne were covered in shadows so he couldn't exactly make anything out except for the eyes. Two blood-red orbs that were the same shade of red as the moon outside stared right back at Naruto with an emotionless gaze. So, you have come. Naruto felt chills run up and down his spine when the figure spoke for the first time after a long moment of silence. His voice so emotionless yet laced with raw power. W who are you? Gathering his nerves enough, he asked of the man. Judging from the voice, I am Naruto blinked and stared at the seated figure as a single thought ran through his head. I couldn't hear him. Um. Sorry but could you repeat that? He asked a bit nervously. I said, my name is once more, Naruto could hear every word except for the name. I, I couldn't hear you again. He asked but instead of replying the figure simply stared at Naruto before closing his eyes in what he guessed was resignation. He couldn't help but feel annoyed that the man was disappointed in him for not hearing his name. It's not like it was his fault that he couldn't hear the stupid name. I see, the figure began to say, breaking Naruto from his thoughts as he opened his eyes and stared at the Kuchiki, you came too early. Just as he said those words, leaving Naruto confused as to what he meant, the shadows along the walls and the floor began to stretch and wrap themselves around Naruto. He would have screamed and tried to break free if he could but the moment the shadows started to wrap themselves around him, he was completely paralyzed. Just before the shadows completely consumed Naruto and everything went blank, he heard the figure speak one last time, go, and come back when you are ready to hear my name. Naruto jerked away sweating all over as his eyes darted everywhere as if expecting to still be within the strange and mysterious world but only found himself back at the academy. Are you alright? Hearing the concerned voice, Naruto turned his head to come face to face with Shaolin who was sitting beside him on her knees with a hand gently resting on his shoulder as she looked at him with a worried gaze. Shao. Lin? 
Naruto asked, more to himself though as he looked around again and noticed that Jin and Toshiro were also looking at him a bit weirdly. Yes, she said while gently rubbing his shoulder to ease some of his tension. You appeared to be having a bad dream and also the class is about to start so I thought I should wake you up. A dream? Naruto said to himself after hearing Shaolin's words. He turned his gaze to the ground and thought about what he had just been through. He had no idea what had happened. That was the only thing he knew. However, thinking back on it, he was certain that what he had just experienced was not a dream. It felt too real. That power, that figure concealed in the shadows, that scenery of the fallen civilization, that sky, that moon, everything. It felt all too real to be a dream. He racked up his brain to come up with a possible explanation for what could all of it have been about but came on empty. Are you done daydreaming? Breaking out of his thoughts by the sudden voice, Naruto looked up to find Toshiro looking at him a bit annoyed. If so then we have to get back to class. The lunch break is long over with, he said before turning and starting to walk away. Naruto sighed and decided to put it out of his mind for now. He still had class so he couldn't keep thinking about it. With that thought he got up and started to follow Toshiro along with Shaolin and Jin as the four made their way back to the classroom. As they walked along the quarters of the academy and towards their class, the images of what had transpired while he slept played through Naruto's head and just like that, he felt tired and wanted the academy to just end already so he could go home and rest. He didn't feel like dealing with the academy anymore. Later that day, right after getting off of the academy and saying goodbye to his three new friends, Naruto had made his way straight home. Walking into the Kuchiki clan compound while waving off the guards that bowed to him, Naruto couldn't help the sense of relief that washed over him as he came to a stop within the clan gardens. Closing his eyes, he smiled slightly as the evening air caressed his face before breathing in deeply and then sighing heavily as the feeling of tiredness still hanged upon him. Naruto really wasn't used to feeling this way. He also didn't understood why exactly he was feeling this exhausted, never in his life had he felt this tired before. And it's not like he had been doing anything particularly taxing but after his encounter with that strange man within that strange world, Naruto had been feeling more and more tired. He had asked the teacher about it and had found out that apparently when souls were subjected to more Reiatsu than they could handle, the souls tend to subconsciously exhaust their own Ryoku to not only withstand but also keep themselves form disappearing and though it made some sense to Naruto seeing as how the Reiatsu he had been subjected to was humongous, for a lack of better word, and Naruto did feel suffocated during the encounter, he still couldn't shake the feeling that that wasn't the case or at least not entirely. He didn't know why or how but he felt a strange familiarity to the rear Yoku and not to mention the man himself. The energy itself was just far too similar to his own and as for that man, Naruto felt that he should know him but no matter how much Naruto thought it over, he just couldn't figure out exactly from where or how. He felt that he just should know him. Shaking his head to get rid of these tiring thoughts, Naruto decided to just leave them be. He wasn't getting anywhere by constantly thinking about it and got the feeling that he won't get anywhere even if he did keep thinking about it. Perhaps, he will ask someone from his family later about it but for now, he decided to just go and take a nice long soak and then go get some sleep. Although a part of him felt like he should stay away from sleeping so to not end up in that place again. He couldn't help but think that he wasn't going to end up there again anytime soon if that man's words were any indication. Once more shaking his head to clear the thoughts, he made his way into the mansion. I'm home. Naruto called out as he slid the Fusuma shut behind him. Welcome home, Naruto. Turning his head to the side, Naruto saw his uncle flying at him with his arms wide open ready to tackle him to the ground. However, right before Ishin could tackle Naruto, he suddenly felt two arms wrap around him out of nowhere before he felt himself get pulled back with his head landing on something plump and soft. Looking up, Naruto came face to face with a grinning Yoruichi. He also chose to ignore Ishin who crashed into the floor. Yoruichi-san? He inquired a little confused. How many times do I have to tell you to just call me Yoruichi? She shook her head in exasperation before another grin overtook her face. But never mind that. What's this about a Hishana I've been hearing about? Yoruichi asked excitedly. Naruto blinked before turning to his still crashed into the floor uncle who was twitching while muttering something about dodged well. He wasn't surprised in the least that his uncle had most likely told Yoruichi about Hishana. The two did enjoy annoying the hell out of Byakuya. He opened his mouth to speak when he was cut off by Fasuma right in front of them opening and in came his parents along with Byakuya. His mother had a hold of Byakuya's arm who appeared to be composed but he could make out the slight twitch in his face. Seeing the three walk in, Yoruichi let go of Naruto while Ishin got up from the floor before the three made their way over to the others and met them at the center of the room. Letting go of Byakuya's arm, Asanoha smiled before giving Naruto a hug which he gladly returned. Welcome home. Naruchan. 
Letting go of Naruto she looked him over for a bit. How was your first day of the academy, it was. Interesting I suppose. Naruto answered because in all honesty his encounter with the strange man aside, the academy had been for the most part, interesting. Asanoha looked at her youngest for a bit longer, knowing that he was holding something back but she decided to not press further, for now. In any case, I believe we all would like some answers from you too. Asanoha addressed her two sons. But first, why don't we all sit down? She offered, getting nods from everyone present as she went over to the table within the room with herself. Yakuya and Sojin sitting on one side and Yoruichi, Naruto and Ishii in the other. All right you two, Asanoha started once more after all of them were seated, now why don't you explain from the beginning? The two brothers looked at each other for a bit as if deciding who should be the one to explain before Byakuya gave a subtle nod, telling Naruto that he can explain. The youngest Kuchiki sighed before he started explaining about Hishana. How they had first met her seven years ago when they had saved her from a near-death condition. How they had taken a liking to her. How they would visit her tea house quite often just to spend some time with her. And how with each passing day the affections between Byakuya and Hishana continued to grow. Though, he made sure to keep out the details about Hishana's situation with her younger sister. Who, she has yet to find. When Naruto finished his tale, there was silence around the table as the adults seemed to be thinking about it. Hmm, so it's that pretty one from the tea house, Ishin said, more to himself, after a while as he stroked his chin while Yoruichi and Sojin nodded along both remembering the nice girl who has served them tea when they had stopped by. Asanoha looked at the other three curiously before asking, You three know this girl? Yes. Sojin nodded at his wife's question as he turned to her, She is this girl that serves tea at that tea house by the border. Asanoha nodded as she did recall that nice little tea house owned by that nice old couple from her own days as a Shinigami. Still, Yuruichi began to say as she looked over at Byakuya, I wouldn't have thought that it was that Hishan all along. I know right. Ishin exclaimed as he turned to Yoruichi, a girl like that is far too good for a punk like him, he stated while pointing at Byakuya. Yoruichi nodded along at his response, Sojin laughed and Asanoha merely raised an eyebrow while Byakuya's eyebrow twitched violently. I don't know. Naruto shrugged, catching all their attention. I think they look quite good together. Nichan is just too big of a wimp to confess his feeling for her. Byakuya frowned at Naruto. You know that's not why Naruto. Of course it is, Naruto exclaimed as he pointed a finger at his brother. You've held feeling for her for past seven years. You would go visit her the same as me. You would sit with her, talk with her, drink tea with her. You even treat her more gently than you treat anyone else and yet after all these years you haven't even made a move to confess your feelings to her. Yakuya's frown deepened. You know as well as I do that I can't just address them. It will only burden her, like hell it will. Naruto snapped as he slammed his fist on the table. She clearly returns your feelings. That's not what I meant, Byakuya said calmly. Just because she reciprocates my feeling does not mean she will accept them. Naruto opened his mouth to argue when Yoruichi interfered. Okay, okay, okay. Now hold on. Clearly there is more going on than what you have told us, she said to Naruto before tuning to Byakuya. Why don't you explain exactly why you would burden her by addressing your feeling to her? Yakuya frowned at her for a long moment before explaining Hishana's situation with her younger sister. So, let me get this straight. Yuruichi started after hearing his reasons, so you believe that by courting her you will not only burden her but also be a hindrance to her search for her younger sister? Yes. There was silence once more as they all pondered on what they had just learned. Alright. Asanoha began to say, catching their attention, we will leave it up to Byakuya for when he decides to court Hishana. But for now. I believe I would like to meet this girl for myself. Although Byakuya was grateful that his mother wasn't going to force him into anything, he really should have expected for her to still want to meet her. Wait? Now? Naruto asked as he looked around to see the others getting ready to get going. Yes, Asanoha said as she regarded Naruto. Is there a problem? Um. Can we have the visit some other day? Naruto said while scratching the back of his head. I'm really tired right now and just want to take a bath and then go to sleep. When the others heard Naruto say that he was actually tired, they knew something wasn't right. Naruto and tired are two words that none of them would use in the same sentence. He has always had far too much energy going for him and never once had he ever complained about being tired. Are you alright? Asanoha asked in worry. Yeah, I'm fine. Like I said, I'm just. Naruto paused as he gave a yawn, tired. Very well then, Asanoha stated. Turning to the others, we will go meet her some other day. The others nodded in agreement before she once more turned to Naruto. I will have the bath prepared for you so go and get changed first. Un. Naruto nodded as he got up from his sitting position and stretched before turning to the others. I'll see you guys later, 
he said one last time before not even waiting for their responses, he left the room, midnight, sitting by the veranda right in front of his room, Naruto gazed up at the moon. It's shaped the same crescent as the blood red one he had seen in that weird world earlier today. As he kept gazing at the celestial body, Naruto couldn't help but find it to be truly beautiful. It was strange really, that despite how much it affects him with restlessness and sleeplessness, Naruto could never bring himself to despise the moon, in that silent calm. Naruto lost track of time and continued to just admire its unmatched beauty for a long while. Naruto-chan, blinking as he was broken from his trance, Naruto turned his head to find his mother taking a seat right beside him before she reached out and gently took him into her embrace and stroked his hair. Naruto immediately relaxed and sighed contently. Did something happen today? He blinked before a smile played on his lips. Of course, his mother would be able to tell that something was bothering him. Sighing, he recalled the strange experience to her. While Naruto was finishing his tale, he failed to notice the slight pause his mother gave. He had an encounter with his Zanpakuto spirit this early? Asanoha thought to herself as she looked at Naruto in astonishment. I have heard of Shinigami having visions while they were still kids before, in fact, Ishin himself had started having those visions when he was younger than even Naruto but to actually have an encounter with one's Zanpakuto spirit in one's own inner world while still lacking the Asachi is unheard of. However, because he didn't have an Asachi to form the bridge between himself and his inner world and Zanpakuto, he had to utilize his own rear Yoku to temporarily form a temporary connection which left him completely worn out. Asanoha blinked as she was broken out of her thoughts by Naruto calling her name, she looked down to see him looking at her questioningly. She smiled reassuringly, Kachan, what do you think that was about? Naruto asked after his mother once she turned her attention to him again, I cannot tell Naruchan. The only one who can is the man you encountered. She couldn't help the smile tugging at her lips when Naruto wrinkled his nose in skepticism. That guy? Naruto asked his mother unsurely, but he didn't look too friendly. I know the first encounters can be a bit unnerving Naruchan. But trust me when I say that that man has nothing but your best intentions in mind. She flicked his nose when she told him this. How can you tell anyway? Do you know this guy? Naruto asked as he rubbed his nose a little. Of course I do. I know you after all. She laughed lightly to herself when he shot her a weird look. And before the two returned to their moon gazing, she told him one last thing. Just be patient Naruto-chan, and everything will be clear when the times is right. Naruto yawned while stretching as he sat up in his futon. Heaving a sigh, he then sat there rubbing his eyes to rid the haziness of a dream-filled sleep. Closing his eyes again and taking a calming breath, he just sat there silently for a while longer. The silence was broken however, when his ears perked up at hearing a strange yet familiar sound that was gradually growing louder coupled with a rear yoku rapidly closing in on him. Naruto sighed before getting up. Good morning, Naruto. And just moments after he did so something crashed onto the floor of his room right on top his futon, sending the tatami mats and his blankets flying everywhere. Naruto nonchalantly turned to stare down at the invader. Ji-chan. What are you doing? He asked neutrally before turning his head to the side and muttering, and good morning? It's already late in the afternoon. Ishin twitched before jumping to his feet, sending the tatami and futon that were on him flying around the room to join the others. He stood tall with his hands planted on his hips as he threw his head back and laughed, Kya ha ha ha. You're getting good, Naruto. To think you'll be able to dodge my stealthy special good morning tackle. Naruto gave his uncle an unimpressed look. Stealthy? With you screaming like a maniac and your rear yoku going wild like that, I could tell you coming from the other side of the serate. His response put a stop to Ishin's laughing as he turned to his nephew with a scandalized look. He opened his mouth to retort but didn't get the chance. Ji-chan. Naruto interrupted, shouldn't you be bothering Ni-chan if you have nothing better to do? Ishin blinked once before a look of realization crossed his face as if now recalling why he was there in the first place. Oh, that's right. He snapped his fingers before he turned to his nephew and said, Naruto, get ready. We will be going to meet Hishana, Nei-chan? We are going to meet her today? Hn. Ishi nodded in response as he crossed him arms over his chest. We were all free so Nei-chan called for us, said we should go today before something else comes up. I see. It made sense, seeing as how for the past week his family had been too busy with one thing or another to make the visit. Well then, Ishin exclaimed as he turned to leave. I'll leave you to get ready while I wait with the rest. See ya. With that he bolted out of the room the same way he came in. Naruto stood there looking a bit confused. Was it just me or did he seem in a hurry to leave? He then shrugged his shoulders and turned back towards his room and instantly came to a stop. Did he just ditch me to clean this mess all by myself? Thank you for stopping by. Please come again. Hishana bid the last customers farewell with a bow, 
before standing straight and heaving a tired sigh. Her hand then went to cover her mouth as she coughed. Even after seven years, her search for Rukia has been going as fruitlessly as ever, even with the help Yakuya Sama and Naruchan provided her. And as a consequence of her restless search her health had continued to deteriorate. She was even warned by Unahana Tanko during her last visit that if she continued on like this, she will be beyond the point of return. But even so, she cannot just stop, for Rukia's sake, and her own. She cast her eyes down and bit into her lower lip, Rukia, Nechan, breaking out of her thoughts at the familiar call, a smile overtook her lips despite her current train of thought. She turned towards the speaker, Naru and paused, Chan, yo, Nechan. How have you been? Naruto greeted her with a grin as he made his way towards her. Ah, yes. I've been fine. She answered, trailing off at the end as she regarded him before turning to look at the rather unusual group of people gathered at the entrance. She did recognize most of them as they were frequent visitors of the shop and well, it really was hard not to recognize them when you lived in the Sarate. Putting Byakuya-sama and Naruchan aside, she recognized the captains of the 2nd and 10th Divisions, Yoruichi Shihoen, and Ishin Shiba, and the Lieutenant of the 6th Division, Sojin Kuchiki. She also knew of Sojin Kuchiki as Byakuya and Naruto's father and Ishin Shiba as their maternal uncle. Then there was the only one that she didn't outright recognize. The woman standing at the front, right between Sojin Kuchiki and Yoruichi Shihoen, and regarding her with a calm smile. Hishana didn't even have to recognize this woman to know that she was Byakuya and Naruto's mother. How nerve-wracking. Here were not only the clan heads of three of the four most prominent and noble clans in the entire Soul Society but also Shinigami of the highest ranked captain class gathered in her little tea house. Now granted, it wasn't the first time that captains have stopped by, but it definitely was the first time when so many were gathered together at the same time. And honestly, their combined rear yoku was making her skin crawl despite the fact that they were not being exerted. Most important, however, was the fact that the family of Byakuya-sama and Naruchan has come along with the two. Gathering her nerves, she faced them straight before bowing respectfully. Welcome. How did it come to this? Hishana thought as she sat between Byakuya and Naruto. Never had she thought that one day she will find herself seated on the same table as people of their standing. What was even more surprising though, was the way they treated her. After being made to sit with them, even though she had tried to politely refuse before complying so as to not offend them, she had not expected to be made part of their conversations. But she was. They involved her in any small talk they did, no matter how pointless, without touching anything too personal to her. She was sure they were aware of everything there was to know about her yet they did not treat her any differently or like an outsider. It really did surprise and threw her off wonderfully to be treated so familiarly by the noblest of soul society. They were casual as opposed to the other nobles she has seen. She supposed that this was where Naruto got his attitude from, but it really is nostalgic. Hishana looked towards Asanoha to see her looking around the tea house with a small, nostalgic smile. Oh yeah. Ishin spoke up at that, Nechan used to visit this place a lot with Tosen back then. That earned a blink from Naruto and even caught Byakuya's attention. They didn't really know much about their maternal grandfather since he had died before they were born, and topics about him were hardly ever brought up. Really? The Shiba grinned from ear to ear as he spoke. Yep. Believe it or not, but Nechan used to be quite the little rascal back in the day. In fact, her temper was even worse than Byakuya's. And even before she officially became Sinigami, she would accompany Tosan and Nisan outside the Serite to cut down any poor rogue or hollow she could find. Hishana turned to Asanoha with disbelieving eyes, finding it hard to believe that the calm woman before her could act like what was just described. The barely noticeable, bashful blush on her face said otherwise though. Sojin looked at his wife with a playful smile and commented, Ah yes, Asanoha Shiba really was scary. Naruto crossed his arms and tilted his head to the side. Then how did Kachan became as calm as she is now? He questioned, before suddenly his eyes lit up, no wait. How did Tochan and Kachan fell in love? He asked excitedly as his eyes twinkled with curiosity. Asanoha gave a barely noticeable pause before sipping her tea. Though her blush did become more prominent at Naruto's inquiry. She really was not used to being the center of such conversations. Yuruichi looked on in interest. It wasn't every day that such stories of Asanoha were brought up so she was naturally curious. On the other hand, Hishana and Byakuya exchanged sideway glances. They seemed to have strayed from the original topic but... the two turned to listen on. Oh, Ishin exclaimed with a wide grin, now that is an interesting story. It isn't. If anything, it was normal. Yes, it was a normal, everyday story for the noble houses. Asanoha added, cutting Ishin before he could over-dramatize their story. 
We were arranged to be married. She gave a pause before continuing. Yes, a contract between the Kuchiki and the Sheba to stabilize the standing of the Sheba clan as one of the four great noble houses after the untimely deaths of my father and brother, the clan head and the clan head to be. And even though I was hastily put as the new clan head and captain of the 10th division, it did not do much to help the situation so your grandfather, Jinrei, came up with the offer of a political alliance between the two houses through marriage. She looked at her own reflection in her tea before putting the cup down. So, yes, it was not a marriage born out of love. She then turned to her husband and taking his hand in hers added, but, well, I suppose it will be more appropriate to say that her love was born out of marriage. Hishana couldn't help but stare at Sojin and Asanoha as they smiled at each other. Even though it was the first time she had formally met them, it was so obvious that the two were completely in love. And quite honestly, they looked so perfect. She wondered if this was what she and Byakuya would look like if they dashed. Her eyes widened and a fierce blush overtook her face. She immediately looked down at her lap, mortified at her own thoughts. The others took notice of her and, being able to tell her thoughts, couldn't help but smile at the girl. Asanoha picked up her tea and studied Hishana. From the short time she had known her, it was easy to tell that she was a sincere and hard-working girl, true to herself. While a likable indeed, there was something that they needed to know. Hishana Chan. She addressed the embarrassed girl causing her to look up. She smiled welcomingly and spoke, Would you like to work for the Kuchiki? Her offer earned her a wide-eyed look from the girl as she continued, We are aware of your search and if you work for the Kuchiki, it will be of great help to you. Naruto's eyes widened and just as he went to speak, his father shot him a look, telling him to be patient. While that confused him, he decided to comply nonetheless. Hishana seemed to be thinking over it for a bit before looking at Asanoha and without any hesitation she bowed and spoke. I am honored by the offer Lady Kuchiki, but I am afraid I will have to decline. And why do you decline? She raised her head to look at the Kuchiki matriarch. I am already being helped by Byakuya-sama and Naruto-sama, which is more than I could ask for, but more than anything, I owe a great debt to this tea house. And I, she casted her eye down with pained look, I can't bring myself to abandon what is in front of me. Not again. Asanoha closed her eyes with a smile. I see. Yes. She really could see why her sons had taken such a strong liking to this girl. The next day, Naruto stifled a yawn as he walked into the classroom, early for once as he mumbled to himself about needing to learn Shunpu and something about it being a pain to walk to the academy from the Kuchiki clan compound every day. It has been about a couple of weeks since Naruto first started to attend Shino Academy and he had to admit that so far it has been quite the experience. Granted, they have yet to do any actual training and were still involved with the theoretical stuff but it still greatly interested Naruto to read about the different art slash concepts of Sinigami combat, plus the history of the Godii 13 and the Serete, especially since a lot of it also revolved around his own family. That being said, they were to start their training, beginning with rear Yoku control, by the start of the third week. That worked just fine for Naruto. Due to the ridiculous levels of spirit energy he was born with, controlling it has always been a problem. It was for that reason that his family had stressed the importance of rear Yoku control early on into his training. And while he has gotten considerably better at it over the years of guidance from his family, he was still far from the point where control was no longer an issue. More importantly however, Naruto sought to attain complete mastery over his rear yoku as he has been taught that how strong a Shinigami could become was heavily dependent on how well they could control their spirit energy coupled with the strength of their spiritual power. Now seeing as how Naruto did not need to worry about the later at this point, all that remained for him was to learn to properly and fully control his rear yoku. You should stop thinking so hard you know. Otherwise, you're gonna come up with a fever. Breaking out of his thoughts, Naruto blinked and took notice that he had been so lost in thought that he had seated himself without even realizing it. He turned to the side and came face to face with a smiling Jin. Naruto deadpanned. I think you should stop smiling so creepily before you are even more disliked than you already are. He retorted, pointing to the fact that the other students made it a clear point to steer as far away from Jin as possible due to his unnerving demeanor. Oh. And look how much I care. Naruto rolled his eyes at Jin's sarcastic remark before turning to the other two and grinning. Good morning Soifan-chan, Toshiro. He greeted, earning their attention over to himself as they eyed him curiously and a bit weirdly. Good morning to you too. Shaolin greeted back before adding a bit uncertainly, and Soifan-chan, Toshiro didn't even bother to respond to Naruto's greeting and just waited for him to explain himself. Naruto's grin widened. I heard from Yoruichi saying that you were going to be inheriting your great grandmother's codename, Suai Feng, when you joined the Yan Mitsukido. So from now on, you're Soifan Chan. He explained while pointing a finger at her. Shaolin looked at Naruto in surprise. 
it was only recently decided that she will inherit the name Su Ifeng after she joins the executive militia as despite being the youngest, she was the only one left from her siblings to eventually succeed her great-grandmother as the head of the clan. But if he knew about that, then did it mean that he also knew about what became of her other older siblings? Her eyes went downcast at that last thought. The others were able to catch on to the sudden shift in her mood, before Jin decided to add his own thoughts on the matter. Ah, I see. I see. He began as he nodded his head in understanding before he turned to Soifan, as Naruto called her, with his smile taking a mischievous turn. Now you have to make sure to get into on Mitsukido. Him. He pointed to Naruto, calling you by a name you were supposed to go by only after you joined is basically him saying he believes in you. Now you don't want to let him down, do you? Jin said as he tilted his head innocently at her. Hey now. Naruto began with a grin of his own. I don't believe in her to make it into the on Mitsukido. I know she will. It's only natural, right, Soifan Chan? He commented, turning to Soifan with a bright grin. Soifan though, instead of saying anything, went red in the face. Toshiro couldn't help but roll his eyes. He then decided to intervene since he doubted that even Soifan would be able to handle both Naruto and Jin messing with her, and what's with the Toshiro? He asked accusingly, causing Naruto to turn to him. What do you mean what? You're Toshiro aren't you? Naruto answered with a shrug. It's Hitsugai to you. Toshiro replied simply as he turned away from him, before he added while casting Naruto a sideway glance, and since when did we become such good friends that you can call me by my first name, but you don't deny that we are friends. Naruto replied back with a grin, knowing that despite Toshiro not openly admitting it, they were friends since all four of them found the rest of the class to be annoying, the noble brats, so for the past weeks the four kept among themselves and bonded a little over the time, but if you don't like it then I guess I will have to call you by the nickname I thought of. Naruto paused, as if there was no helping it, Shiro-chan. Toshiro sputtered with a red face before snapping at Naruto, absolutely not. He had enough with Momo calling him that, he did not need Naruto of all people to start calling him by that embarrassing nickname as well. Naruto grinned at him. Then you'll have to do with Toshiro. He barely stopped himself from snapping at Naruto again before he took a few deep breaths to calm himself and regarded the Kuchiki. What about you and Ichimaru then? Naruto stared at him. What about us? Toshiro's eyebrow twitched. We can call you two what we want right? Naruto shrugged, I guess. He then gave a pause before adding with a cheerful, perhaps a little too cheerful, grin. Oh, but if you want to, you can call me Naruchan. He then added with a pause, like the women in my family do. Toshiro's eyebrow gave another twitch, before a smirk played on his lips. Thanks, but I think I will call you Fishcake instead. Naruto's grin, instead of faltering like he had hoped only seemed to widen as he replied, go right ahead. Though you should know that my name, Naruto, was chosen by my mother because of its meaning maelstrom and she doesn't like it when people comment it means fish cake. The thought of saying anything that could be taken as an offense by the Kuchiki clan gave Toshiro the stop. He glared at Naruto annoyed, you thought this through, didn't you? Naruto smiled innocently at him, whatever could you mean? Toshiro once more stopped himself from acting on his urge to snap at the Kuchiki and instead said, all right. So what about Ichimaru then? Naruto actually seemed a little thoughtful here as he held his chin. I guess we can just call him Jin. But wait, maybe G. Finish it, and I'll stab ya. Naruto stared blankly at Jin, whose smile, if at all possible, seemed to have grown even wider and creepier before. He once more turned to the others and said, So anyways, from now on, you guys are Soifan Chan, Toshiro and Jin. And as for me, you can just leave aside the Kuchiki and call me Naruto. That sure worked out fine for you. Toshiro couldn't help but once more glare at the smiling Revenet. Come on. It's not like you have a problem with it. Toshiro didn't even bother replying and simply turned to face the front, noticing the teacher walk in. Although, he did silently admit to himself that Toshiro wasn't nearly as bad as getting stuck with Shiro-chan. But there was no way he was going to say that out loud. Alright everyone, attention please. With the voice of the teacher calling for attention, the conversations around the class stopped as everyone shifted their attention over to the teacher and no one noticed Jin open his eyes to study Naruto. It would seem that despite it not being all that long since they first met, Naruto had already moved on to first name terms with them. Jin eyed the Kuchiki in contemplation. A maelstrom huh, what a fitting name indeed. He really was like a maelstrom that had hit their lives out of nowhere, and slowly but surely, they were getting dragged to the center. Man, doesn't that teacher ever get tired of talking? Naruto commented as he walked out of the classroom alongside Toshiro, Jin, and Soifan. 
Yeah, it was interesting at first but listening to him speak about the same thing for hours non-stop gets really boring. Toshiro looked at him for the corner of his eyes before he humped. I don't think you have any right to complain when you start dozing off before even halfway into the lectures. Naruto pouted. But it gets so boring. The whitehead didn't even bother turning as he spoke. We are here to become Sinigami. It doesn't matter how boring it gets, we have to listen attentively to grasp the concepts. HN. Naruto crossed his arms and closed his eyes with a smile as he spoke. What can I say, I'm the type who understands better by practice than by long-winded explanations. So if on casted Naruto a puzzled look, is that really something to be proud of? Toshiro gave her a deadpan look, of course not. He's just an idiot. Jin kept smiling, my it is Naruto we're talking about. Suppose he can be proud. Naruto's eyebrow twitched at the comments and was about to snap when a meek sounding voice cut in. Jin. Turning towards the source, he saw a young girl around their age with short, shoulder length strawberry blonde hair and blue eyes standing not far from them. She appeared to be from the regular classes and seemed to have come all the way to the advanced courses building just to look for Jin. Rain Jaiku. He found curiosity bubbling within as Jin went over to the girl, Rain Jaiku, with said girl asking where he had gone off to this time. Clearly upset, Jin responded without actually answering the question, and to anyone else looking, it would have seemed as if he was fooling around like he always did as he talked to the desperate girl. Naruto was empathic though. He could sense the negative emotions of others like they were his own. So he was probably the only one who could tell that Jin couldn't be any farther from fooling around. The usual negativity that he harbored when dealing with the rest of the world was absent with this particular girl. It had him thinking. He had wondered just why the silver head kept hanging around the three of them when he kept them at arm's length, never opening up nor letting his guard down, when he had his eyes set on something that they couldn't grasp. And looking at him now, with someone he treated differently, someone that clearly mattered to him, raised similar questions. It honestly had him stumped. No matter how much he looked, he just can't tell what's what with Jin. Ah, it's you. Naruto blinked as he was broken out of his thoughts by Rain Jaiku's exclamation as she pointed a finger at Toshiro who nodded a greeting. So you decided to become a Shinigami after all, she said, smiling down at the boy. Toshiro gave her a look, that to Naruto didn't look all too pleased for some reason, as he replied, yes well, it's not like I had much of a choice otherwise. Naruto looked between the two curiously along with Jin, you two know each other? He inquired, and the strawberry blonde turned to him with a questioning look. Ah, I'm Naruto Kuchiki by the way. She nodded her head. Rain Jaiku Matsumoto. He blinked at the rather normal greeting. That was new. To answer your question, Toshiro began, earning their attention, yes, we do know each other. He then looked to the side and added, she was the one who suggested that I become a Shinigami. Now that interested Naruto. He then looked back up at the girl and said, but I didn't know that you knew Ichimaru. Ah, Jin and I? We dash. Think we'd better go have lunch now else the break will be over. Before anyone could say anything to Jin's rather abrupt interference, Naruto spoke up, you're right. As I much as I wouldn't mind if it did, the break won't last forever. He then turned to the strawberry blonde and said, you will be joining us, right? She gave one look at Jin and nodded to Naruto. He grinned at that and gestured towards Jin as he said jokingly, that's good. You just caught him, so you at least have to grab a hold of him. Nothing else of importance was said after that as the group started on their way towards their usual spot for lunch with Range Aiku. So Ifan and Toshiro making small talk, and Jin falling in step with Naruto at the back. And just what did you mean by that? He asked for only the Kuchiki to hear. The hidden implication of Naruto's words had not been lost to him. Oh nothing much, Naruto began as he grinned back at the smiling Jin. I just thought that you would want to spend some time with the girl you want to change things for, he said before going to join the others. Jin opened his eyes to stare at the Kuchiki. He could tell that Naruto had been taking shots in the dark, and had surprisingly hit the mark. But that wasn't what had him curious. No, what he was interested in was what had Naruto taking those shots in the first place. Jin's smile turned into a smirk. This was his fight. That much was certain. But he wasn't one to shy away from letting others get involved if it helped. That still begged the question though, what was going to come out of having someone like Naruto Kuchiki get involved? Alright guys that's the end for now. This is Chaos Shinobi signing off.